with something we've never said out loud? Secret stuff. Top secret. secret. Right. Yeah. yeah. That is not so. a tiny find. No, that's, that's a, a big, big find. It's a huge find. Did you not. have to open that up? Or? Yes, we opened that up. Yeah. So they never intended that to be no. storage. That's a and, hitting spot so, that we found. Wow, look at that? this. Just because you buy an RV doesn't mean you have to keep it to look like an RV. Sure. We gotta ask, is it junk? It's a treasure, look or at it. it. Treasure? Look at it, it's a treasure. <laughs> look at this space in it's... here. And this is a toy hauler, can you believe it? How do you guys put your pins in? Is no, it one night here we stay? Go. Or is the, it you drive yeah, yeah, through? Yeah. There's, there's a lot of other things I'm not going to say on tape, here's, but here's our cups. They and this, sit just like that. Don't that, mind my mess. That's how they ride. Look at that. They, they never move. move. There's a lot of upgrades just here. You're talking, I mean, major one, well, yeah. two, three, four, five, just just right here. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.life. at the Florida RV Super Show and we ran into some old friends. Yes. Yes. Jimmy and Lisa from Find Us Camping. It's been a while. It has been. It might have been this show last year, actually. I, yeah. No, Hershey. Hershey. We saw you for a minute at Hershey. Right. Yep. That's right. Yep. Briefly at Hershey and then we chatted quite a bit uh, yes. in the Florida Keys. Yes. Which uh, we're in Tampa which is a lot different than the Florida Keys. Right, but still <laughs> it's really warm. nice. It's warm here. It is warm and uh, last time we talked or, or a year ago, you guys were telling me about the brand new RV you guys were getting right. and how there much you love it. There it is. Uh, tell us what it is. So it is a 2022 Keystone Fusion 428. So okay. we have a huge open floor plan Lots of living space, cross conversational seating, which is not which common is a in a toy hauler. Um, yes, yeah, so we just love it. That's that's great. I can't wait to see it. Uh, partly because uh, you know Sheree and I are always looking for the RV that combines the right spaces where you can. Right. I, I do like the garage for the office aspect. Love to pop down the back if you got a great view. sunset or view. Yeah. That's amazing, but then you sacrifice, in a lot of models, you sacrifice the living space. The living space. Absolutely. And we but have the living space in this one. Yes. Awesome, yes. how long are you? 45 foot. 45? 44, 44 11. 11. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, it depends on how technical you want to be. Well, you guys are longer than we are. Yeah, yeah that's... And parking in a place like this was kind of tough, but right. we got it in there. So so Boom docking is great. Right, when you can find large boondocking <laughs> right. spots, uh, but some of these full hookup campgrounds might be a little challenging. Like national parks, state parks sometimes are kind okay. of iffy, but um, not good wood. We haven't had I, money problems. I don't the think whole we've, year we've, we've had been it. able to get in everywhere we've tried. And a lot of times, even if online you have a problem, if you call, Okay. and say this is what i am this is what i have maybe you have to park your truck away from your rv but Which most places today. can accommodate us so right. it's, it's worked out well yeah us too and speaking of trucks what do you tow it with we have a 21 chevy 3500 silverado high country Do it. okay Do it. Do it. okay great we will take a look at that as well in this video get some advice from you guys and again, look at all the amazing uh, things about this RV, all of the upgrades you guys have done, and what you've done to make it home. Yes. Can't wait. All right, well, let's take a look inside. All right. Oh, you've got an outdoor kitchen. So. That's cool. It is cool. And the um, black stone drops down, so it comes out. Okay, I was going to say that down. looked a little high. Yeah, no, you know, sometimes <laughs> when the campsite's a little cattywampus, it does that too. But, sure. Uh, so we have the little mini fridge, the TV, the fridge. and the Blackstone, or flat top griddle. Um, uh, yeah, so it makes great. outside it, and we don't need to tote around something big that takes up extra space inside. It's already here. Gosh, the outside kitchen, this is kind of rare on uh, toy, toy haulers. haulers. Yes. Right. Or some of them maybe have a little fridge, so we were excited. Um, this actually came with a two burner. We kind of reconfigured it. it and found a 17 inch griddle that would fit in here. Okay. So we will use that a whole lot more than just the two single burners. We, that's not for us. Um, 
and then it has the little fridge. So it has everything we need to cook out here, and then we don't have to tote. We used to tote a big griddle or tote a grill. It all is right here, so we don't have to use space for anything else. Right, same here. We dumped our grill for the sous vide, but, uh, but that, again, if it's mounted in there and you're not hauling it separate right. and in and out, of, in and out makes it hard so yeah. if, it's, if it's bolted it's to here. the camper it's there it's just easier to to deal with every day and the tv and the I, and actually i don't know if i've seen any outdoor kitchens with a tv <laughs> and as you know well what? it's funny we've probably only used it a couple of times because if we watch tv it's usually inside at night like we don't typically but a lot of times well i will say if you have friends over and there's a game on the guys like to congregate right here Sure. So we're making some brats and watching the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. You can be right and, here. And the beer can be you know? in there, so nobody has to go far. <laughs> right. Everything's right uh, here. Wow. I, really, an RV with the guy in mind. <laughs> right. <Absolutely. laughs> so <laughs> it's like the outside man cave yep. right yeah. here. <laughs> That's it. The girls can stay inside where it's cool. Now, if I can just get a smoker to come out here, that would be really nice. Oh, there you go. But you only have so much room. We don't have so much room. <laughs> is this a custom paint job? No, this is just a regular. I mean, it's okay. a full body This is a regular full body paint. Okay. So three different colors. All of them come with the black, but you have a blue, you orange. You can do blue, and, orange, red. I think it's blue, orange, or red. Yeah, I think that's it. So this is one of my favorite add-ons, and he wasn't so sold on it when we got it. But um, so it's a safety rail by Mori, but so the magnet holds it in place when you're traveling, so it stays in. And then when you get here, you pop it out. So instead of like most Linda handles, even the extended ones only come down two steps, you've got support all the way to the bottom step. That is really yeah. cool. I'm a firm believer on it now where I wasn't before. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't He was not, it. he's like, I don't know. And I said, it looks awesome to me. And so we did it and I love it, love it. Yeah, we had a different version of that that, that was basically attached to the steps. Yeah. Right. But Sheree didn't like it, so we pulled it Well, that one was too far and, down. You have to go one well, or two steps down before you can really reach it. And a lot of people don't like the one that attaches because when it folds in, depending on what your setup is inside, that handle would rub furniture or cabinets or whatever. So I, we never had one like that, but that's what I've heard a lot of people say is we want to get rid of that because it hits something inside. So this, you know, when you're not using it, it's completely out of the way. It doesn't interfere with anything else. And then when you get there, it's just that simple. You pull it out and uh, Yeah, I love so that. I love and we will put links to as many of these upgrades as possible down below in the description and the pinned comment. Uh, now the solid steps from Moride, uh, were those standard or was that an upgrade as well? So on the Fusions, they come with the solid step on the front, but they don't have the lift assist, which means you have to lift So this, one, this one has the um, lift assist on it. So okay. we can upgrade that and do the lift assist so that it's, so now it's, it's just, just it's one it's, it's one finger now. Right. Um, so that have, makes it easier. You don't have to hold it up and it comes straight on down. Yeah. So, yeah that was an upgrade with the lift assist on here. We have the... He always thought, they're not that heavy, but like I would get it up and he's like, I'm afraid you're going to drop that. And it's this is the only way to go with these. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. But, yes. Awesome. But we, we did upgrade the back steps. Yes. That's That was because we had the flip-up steps by Moride in the back. Okay. Yeah, we had the ones that, you know, that roll, you know, you pinch your fingers, all that kind of stuff. Okay. That's what we had in the back, but Lippert make, I mean, shoot, Moride makes these, um, but the ones back there, the treads fold up. So in the garage, when you're not trying to give up space, we don't have big toys, but people that do, you know, they need every inch. So these would take up, you know, the depth of this inside the garage. The flip-up ones, we'll take you back and show you, they just fold up. So they only take up like this much room. Oh, wow. And so right. um, they don't have a lift assist. They're but they're, manual, light, they're lighter to but start they're with. But they're lighter. So. And, and that's one of the reasons we never got steps for the back, yep. because we didn't want this big right. clunky right. thing. Yeah. So and when they came out with the lift, with the, with the flip-up, we went with them fast. You want to go to the oh, okay. Yes, I, I was like, it kept he kept showing us. The sewer? He said, over here, I said, no, our sewer. He said, over here. <laughs> he kept showing us. So the uh, escort or whatever, he kept showing me different campsites. And uh, it's like, he asked, what side was the sewer on? I said, the side all of them are? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Jimmy, I said, where's our sewer hookup? And Jimmy says, here. And I'm like, no, this is the wrong uh, side. Our sewer hookup. He said, 
here. So we put the chairs in front just to kind of block it. <laughs> right. At least, looks a little bit At least you don't trip over it anyway. And, and I've intentionally done this before to put the view where you want it sometimes, but uh, not at a typical campsite. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Well, this isn't right. typical because you're. This is right. just a vendor section at the, right. at the show, so we're not really. Yeah. <laughs> but these are the uh, these are the flip up steps, so they go. They, okay. They're really compact. So oh they, wow. They close so up, when they go in, you know, there's down. only this much depth inside. So actually, they don't really stick out past the rail of the Happy Jack. So okay. They're pretty much flush in there. And we had that through, is cool. Through more ride, we also have all these lights on here. So once so when they come up, they're motion lights. So as you come up at night, they all come on. Okay. And as you go in, they go off. So I don't have to worry about having a light on or off. So this is a fairly new product, this right? This is a newer yes. product, yes. yes. Okay. Wow. But to flip up inside, and then here, which is another nice thing from them, is the, uh, is the extended handle. So when we're going up the steps, I don't have to reach all the way up here to grab grocery, to put the groceries wow. in. You don't have all to do have, the dance. All we, we have to do it. is, all we have to do is pull this, pull this open, and the door opens up. Wow. So if you're that you're down here awesome. below, you just pull you just pull it and it opens. So you know, you used to do the come up and grab this and open. Yes. And then come back down and open the door, but now you can just from here That here. is so awesome. Um I, I have not seen that upgrade and that's what's really cool about uh, companies like Moride and Lippert and a lot of the smaller ones is coming up with these gadgets that... The smaller things make the biggest impact, oh my the biggest impact on you. Correct? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's great. I mean, it's just like these steps because, you know, with the toy hauler now, we put this up here. And, of course, this one's not a cisk, but it goes in. And when it goes in, it doesn't take up part of any room. Right. Inside. Look at that. Yeah. When where, the where the old ones would take up. Another yeah. another two foot or so in there. Exactly. I see you have a couple Lippert yep. products here. The screen assist, screen assist. The screen uh, shot. The screen and the screenshot. Yes. So screen defender. That means you guys must have some pets, right? We had a pet that we carried around, but once we went full time all the way, our daughter stole our pet, and oh, and now she stays at home with her. So we don't have a pet now, but we had this on there so she wouldn't scratch it and tear it up. So right. Every once in a while, when our daughter comes camping with us, we bring the dog. We bring our dog and. That will that will save that. Okay. Uh, but the but the screen assist, you just push down on that, and then of course the screen shot. It helps the door shut by itself. Right. All these different products. <laughs> yeah. We we have this. That's all we have. Yeah. The screen shot. This, but well, this is that, good if you're carrying something outside. You just use great. your elbow on it, and you can just open the door as you come out. And as you're walking down the steps, this shuts behind you, keeps your dog in, which the screen defender helps the dog stay in. So. It's a pretty good little contraption on all three of those right there that keeps everything everything in. Right. I think uh, of all the RVs I've seen, you guys have made the most upgrades to just, <laughs> just a, sing itself. a single we entrance. We have one more of them. Right. We still have one more. <laughs> right. So when we got rid of our steps, our fold-out steps that most of the toy haulers have and most of the people have, now we have another toolbox. So this is where your steps oh, used to be. Oh, sure. We have, we have a toolbox that, took, that fits perfect in that in that spot there. Now. Sure. Who makes that? That's more right also. <laughs> okay. Okay, I was trying to get something like that. So, um, so a lot of people will put those steps in and leave the steps here. But if you want, for us, we need more space. So we took those steps out and put the box in, and now we, we freed up everything. Right, right. I was actually trying to get a product like that, and the yep. one I was looking at would not fit. Yep, that fits perfect. Right? It, it, it literally latches in the same holes that your steps came in. Four, four bolts to hold it in there. Okay. So, yeah, there's a lot of upgrades just here. You're talking, I mean, major one. Well, yeah. Two, three, four, five, just just right here. Yeah. And and the Bauer lock. So we have oh, a key, okay. we have entry. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking key, six plus, entry. plus your thin shade. So we're talking seven. Oh, you got yeah, the thin shade. And we do up that there. one upside down, so when we're inside, right. we just pull it down. So we have seven upgrades just, well, just right there. And we have the keyless entry, but also we had all the keys on the rig key to like, so this key operates everything oh, okay e even the storage base everything. Everything. okay everything. so yeah that's that's so I guess great it's eight. if you're counting it's eight <laughs> because we have we have the lights too so we're talking wow. eight things right it's a there lot when you start adding it up that that is great yeah we just flipped our thin shade around that's after everybody kept right? saying yes. uh you just need to flip that around yes. they have more privacy yes. like, okay makes sense yeah. right and you but, think Dumb. Yeah. I did not think of that. Yeah. We it's, learned it's, that from another channel a long time ago. It's it great. Made, it made a help. It made a big deal. 
there's eight things right there, and then, of course we have the snap pads also. Okay, right, yeah, an RV essential right there. Right. Especially in the, the snap pads. world, we love that. Yeah. You know, because it doesn't matter how rough the terrain. We actually, on our last fusion, we were at a harvest host, and it was a parking lot. It was paved, but there was a rock, and we didn't see it, and it bent our foot. Like, it just folded it up like a taco. Oh, wow. Um, yep. And so when we got this one, we got the snap pads, and they've been amazing for that because they cushion it. You know, they take they take the brunt of it. And we have the big nice. we have the big footprint bigger than the, the regular jacks. So that, yeah, that fusion okay. upgraded. Their, their feet are bigger now. Oh, we yeah. also have, for boondocking, we upgraded, um, we have independent suspension and nice. disc brakes, which we did at Moride. And so this is something... This is probably something we've never said out loud, other than at Moride. We can um, hold that and wait that till the end. Okay, we'll save that. Till <laughs> because it's huge. Because we we actually had Moride come over thing. here the other day, and they never thought about this what thing. what that causes by having independent suspension. So they actually came over here last night and went, "Wow, that's something that we can use for marketing." Because we never thought about that. Yeah. So we'll okay. tell you all of that near the end. Okay, secret, secret There's your stuff. Top secret. secret, right? Yeah. <laughs> You guys are going to share some stuff that Mori learned from you yes. by yes. looking at your rig the other day. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Awesome. awesome stuff. Tell us about the independent suspension. Well, the independent suspension that we have on here still have the 7K axles, if you want to consider them axles. They're not really axles. They're all, they cut the old axles off, cut all the hangers off, and they bring up new pieces to give you the independent suspension, which come with, I think, either three or four inch rubber. Um, cushion inside with a yeah, shock. So, like so with us with triple axle, when the first wheel hits, it goes up and it comes back down and the next one comes up, it goes down and the third one goes up. Not like your truck. So when you go across a railroad track with your truck, you feel it because your axles go up and down. Just well, like and a, both just sides, like a normal, yes. right? Both sides are going up and down. So now each little tire is doing its own thing. So we're up to 36,000 miles on this RV right now since February of last year. Wow. And we've been way out west. We've been over some of the roughest roads you can possibly have, and we have proven now that things do not move in the cabinets and stuff. I mean, you know, occasionally. But the only, only time like something will move be. is we had we had a slam on the brakes for a deer not too long ago, and centrifugal force slammed everything up. Of course, things fall over. Your your independent suspension won't do anything about that. But as you're going across those roads, and Lisa will show you inside that we actually have cups sitting on top of each other. Like I have coffee mugs, mugs stacked, and we travel with them. And it didn't occur to me anymore until a friend said the other day, what do you do with those when you travel? And I said, I, nothing? I, what do you mean? Oh, my wife would move all those and wrap them all up. And I said, well, no, they just stay right there. Very cool. And, but it's the thing you, know, you get used to. And, and as you come inside, it. you'll see so many things are laying on our shelves. We don't stay longer anywhere longer than two weeks at a time. That's the most we've ever stay. Um, so it's too much to to make it feel like home and then pack up and put away, move. pack up. We don't yeah. move anything. I don't move a lot. There's a couple things up, like my plant. I move it so it'll be safe and not fall over and you know be a dirt pile on the floor. But so I'm gonna say, as far as stay. independent suspension goes, that's one of the, one of our upgrades. It's probably one of the biggest and the best investments we've ever had so right because everybody talks about the rv is a constant yes. earthquake, earthquake going on the road, road yep. and you've just cut that earthquake and down it's, to... it's a tornado now it's so, not it's not quite as bad well and he actually did a video that we can give you the link um we sat a glass of water in the sink with a gopro on it we had a gopro tied underneath and then i had the camera in the truck so that you could see you know the bounce and you would think that the water would just be sloshed, but it just kind of yep. goes like this. It never spilled. And I had it wow. just sat in the sink. Yeah, crazy. And that was when we were boondocking. So we were coming down a gravel road. Getting Two and a half mile road off, off the road. road. So wow, cool that's so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, they're, they're great. And, of course, we also upgraded to the disc brakes. Um, okay. I've never had disc brakes. We've been pulling trailers and campers all, you know, most of my driving career. I've always had regular trailer brakes. Yes, disc brakes make a big, big, yeah. big difference, especially coming down off the mountains in Colorado. We first got this, we didn't have the disc brakes. We went out west, came down off the mountains of Colorado. The whole front of the truck is shaking because you're, 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 you know, you're heating lot, up the you brakes. Know? Yeah. We went back out to the same way with the disc brakes. Never had an issue with that. Oh man. Isn't we, that crazy? We had disc brake upgrade right before we went through the Teton Pass. Oh. And, wow. Yeah. Yes. Huge, huge difference. Yes. And they're totally. so much easier to change. 
You know, you don't have to worry about pulling a wheel off, cutting all the wires in the back, pulling your brakes off, putting new ones on. These are just Chevrolet disc brakes. You just pull out a pad, put the new pad in, bleed it, and you're done. So you finish okay. it quick and easy. Yeah, I, I hear nothing but incredible things about the independent suspension. Yes. Yes. So that is something that's on our list. And it, sure. sa it saves the rest of the camper, too, because it's just not beaten. At 45 foot long, that's a lot of twisting and bending and popping going in the road. And that just right. saves so much, so much. Is well, there less a, popping because of that? So when, you, when you're less, turning, yes, because you need to turn and you hear yeah, that yeah, popping going in. Yeah, yeah, there's none of that. Yeah, okay. There's none of that no popping, popping anymore. And what I notice it the most is, like, when you're driving and you go over train tracks, right, the truck goes like this, and then if you look in your mirror, the trailer goes like this behind you. It does not anymore. The truck goes like this, and then the trailer just stays straight because each wheel is independently doing its thing, so it's not... This. So if you think cool. about that in the grand scheme of things, every bump you hit in the road, all six tires aren't jumping, right? Correct. Just the three on this side or wherever the bump is. So it makes a huge difference. I was looking at that storage right there. I was thinking that looks like an add-on. Nope, that's, nope, that's that original. Came. That came. That came okay. stock. And what a lot of people are doing is putting like a you know mini air compressor in there. Yeah, the Some of them are coming like that now. Okay. That is cool that they're... They're finding out they could put more storage here. Yes. So we have a little bit of an air compressor in there and then just some of our yeah. our sewer hub stuff in there. There is a um there's a power outlet in there and a light in there, so Okay. We can run like an extension cord when you're on campsite and you're trying to, you know, you have people over and you need an extension cord, we can run it through and plug it in there, lights, whatever. So um and that's that came stock. The one under the steps he added on, but this one's comes on infusions. That's great because that's an issue we have with our toy hauler is very little storage, storage yes. outside of the garage. Well, they, that's what they say. They say all your storage is in a 13-foot garage, but I don't want to store all right. that stuff in my garage. I don't garage. want it to be right. a storage unit. I want to use it yeah. as a garage. Right, so. exactly. So as we're walking here, you can also side. see the shine that we have on here because we have that ceramic coating installed too. Okay. Um, so I don't have to wax this thing for four to six years. Wow. And we just... We haven't taken care of it like we're supposed to. <laughs> uh, we're supposed to wash it every month, but being on the road, on, most so campgrounds, campgrounds you can't wash it. You can't wash it. Right. So we haven't washed it in probably six or eight months, and it was pretty nasty. And it took us about an hour or so to wash it again, and it still beads up just like it was brand new. The two of us can wash it in an hour, so that's not bad. Okay. It's pretty big, so for an hour, the two of us. Very cool. Add you can see how much it shines. It's, it's, it's shines pretty good. <laughs> it doesn't look like we'll be opening up that uh, yeah, back door, huh? Yeah, they put yeah, us back up pretty they, tight. They us in tight. Right, our ramp is like a foot off the road. <laughs> so, oh, wow. so yeah, we are not opening up the the back. But this does have the zero G, zero G, so there, it just comes down nice and easy. So we don't have to force it down or anything. It's all it's all loaded, spring loaded. Okay, and I do see that you've got legs yes. built in right. to yes. this. We have legs when it comes down and it's flush. We still have your cables like everybody else has. But okay, we can also get rid of the cables and use these for for uh, stability. Okay, were the legs standard? Yes. 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 Okay. And then it has stairs that when you put your railing up around the deck, the stairs come off this side. Okay. So you, could, you know, an exit off the deck without having to come back inside. Okay. That that is really cool. I've never seen legs like that on a rig. Yeah, this is nice because when you're so. out somewhere, you can have six or seven people standing on your back deck, and you have this, and you're not worrying about those, those cables. But when you're out west and we back up over some of those beautiful drops that we go out to out west, you can't put the legs out there because it's a thousand foot drop, so you're relying on the cable. So, <laughs> and I will back him right up to the edge. He hates it. He's like, I'm going to fall over. I said, it's good. It's good. You're going to uh, be fine. Oh, I love doing that and opening the deck that way. Yeah. That's the best thing yeah. about out west. You can't do that on the east coast. You can't do that on the camera. <laughs> right. Yeah. The views. The views. So we have actually, when we get inside, we'll see turned um, our garage into a bedroom. It's more like our master suite. Oh, so when the deck cool. is down and the views are awesome, the sun rises and the sun sets from your bed. Like, it's just beautiful. And since we travel together, if we're in a place like this, the views aren't that great, we just sleep in the front. So we have we we have multi <laughs> rooms, so we can sleep wherever we want. Oh, okay, so, so you change what bedroom change whatever, you want. But whatever okay. whatever scenery looks like outside is where is where we sleep. Okay, so if it's but, a bad scenery, we just sleep up front. Well, and then also if we have friends come or if the kids come to stay, they can have their own bedroom and there's a half bath in the garage, so they have their own little living space, you know, that's kind of private and their own thing. So very we cool. We enjoy that as well. But this is where our fuel bay is. 
All right, right. That looks very familiar. Yeah. So what's just what's one feeds the everybody? generator. That one's for toys if you had them. Or this one feeds the generator, and when it runs out, we'll pump off that one into this one for extra. So we can carry 60, 60 gallons of fuel total. Okay. And, and we have figured out if we're running full power on the generator, we can burn about a gallon an hour. So we can burn about 60 gallons an hour running three ACs and enjoying life. Okay. Um, so it gives you 60 hours. Nice. Of course, you know, you, you like to camp in places where maybe you don't have to run everything all the time. The weather's <laughs> nice and you don't need all the ACs and all the stuff. Kind of go for the flip-flop weather, right? right? Yes. We, 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 we flip actually flip-flopped the weather. We, we went the wrong weather at the wrong times. We oh, went, okay. This year, I'm a Shuri. I'm the beach tribe. This year we've been <laughs> in negative four degrees all the way up to 127. So we've actually oh, wow. been total backwards this year. So. Um, the RV life, you know, you're supposed to be able to go where you want, but sometimes life dictates you yeah, and makes yeah, you go different directions. Out, but. but you guys have some solar yes, on we top as well. So you don't have to always use the generator, no. right? No. Not okay. At all. Yep. So, yeah, it's a great bonus. It's a great backup plan. And then, you know, you never know. You never know what you got going on. And then sometimes you have those cloudy days that you need to boost the, you need, you need to boost the solar, so the generator right. will do that too. How many slides do you have? Well, three we slides. have three. Okay. Um, we currently have one that's out of commission. Uh, when we leave here, we're going to Indiana, and we hope we're going to be pioneering. So fingers crossed that this is a permanent fix um, for a problem they've been having, and so we're going to kind of be the pioneers or guinea pigs, if you will. And that's what we do sometimes with Keystone. We're Keystone ambassadors, so we have worked with Keystone a lot since we full timers are a lot of stay in parks and they don't move around a lot we move a lot so in the last three years we've gone over a hundred thousand miles so wow. we open our slides a lot in and out, in and we out. drop the in feet down out. a lot we do a lot of wear and tear on the campers and stuff so we are working with keystone now to come up with a new fix that if that happens again for other people in the 2019s to the 21s to 22s that they will be able to have something to fix it for them. So that's who we are with Keystone. We're pioneers. We yeah. are. And we, we were we supposed to, they, we, we could have gone up before the show, but we wanted to spend some time in Florida and enjoy the show. So sure. our bedroom slide is, is permanent in right now. Next week it'll be back operational and hopefully it'll be a great fix for anybody else that's having a problem. Is it a Schwintex forward. slide? It is a Schwintex slide. It okay. was a Schwintex slide. Oh, was? Yes. Was. Okay. Um, now it's going to go back to cables, which all of our other slides are cable slides. That was the only one that was Schwintech. So that's that's the kind of pioneer part, is they're going to swap it from a Schwintech to a cable, which has never been done before. So we're hoping thing. this works. So we don't know if it's going to so, work yet. So. Okay. But the 2022 Fusions have cable slides the threes, up front. The now. 23s. 23s, they have cable slides. Their bed slides. slides have cable. So, you know, anybody that's having the problem, you know, in that meantime where it was a Schwintech, hopefully... If they're having a problem with it this will be a good fix for everybody so that's the that's we, the goal we actually had an rv tech talk about some of the issues with the schwinn tech slides and you know did a couple of tips on if you have a problem like that uh there's a little uh button little inside there button did, there did, you, yes. did you try what, that what happens yes what happens with a schwinn tech and especially us being so long the box has the square has to be 100 percent square for it to go in so okay. if you have any flexing going on or any twisting going on, or if you're not in the best level site, um, it, puts that, it puts that square out of square. And when it puts it out of square, they won't go in correctly. Yeah, so, so it would try to go in at an angle, and this bottom corner would hang. And um, they also said, or somebody, I don't remember who it was that told me, but somebody we talked to when we had a problem with the first time was, you need to run it all the way out and then hold the little button, and then it kind of resyncs all the motors except it wouldn't go out so we couldn't hold the button because it wouldn't get out so that was the whole the whole hiccup the last time it got stuck out just a smidge <laughs> wouldn't go in wouldn't go out but we finally got it in and then since then we've been to indiana and they've worked on it and then we have you know scheduled in a week or so to be up and fingers crossed okay i'm confident like we've had the cable slides we've never had a problem with them knock on wood so I'm feeling good about the switch over. It's just the process of how to switch out the components because like the Schwintech needs X amount of space, but the cable slides maybe don't need so much right. or whatever. So that's the, I think that's going to be the determining thing is, but they're working on it and they're trying to get it fixed. So. Did you guys try calling that uh, Lippert number support desk no. at all? No, we didn't try to do that on this. We, okay. had, we did on our old, we're old with the, uh, with the jacks not going up and Lippert is very good at 
help. Yes. Um, okay. This here, what there's a there's something going on inside there. Okay. That, that just, but I will say that plug for Lippert because any any time I've ever had to call them for any customer service issues, they've been phenomenal. Like they they truly have. Um, we like he said on our old one, we had a problem with the jacks and we were day we were day hopping across the country, and I would call from the truck and say, hey. I can't try to do anything right now, but this is what I've got going on. So when I get to the next place, you'll be closed, but can you tell me what to try? And I'll try the things, and I'll keep record of what happened, and I'll call you back tomorrow and say, this is what, you know, I tried this, and this happened. Now what? And and they worked with me every day. I would call them back, and they worked with me until we got it working. So they were amazing. And we will put that number down below. It's actually at the bottom of all of our videos in the description. Yeah. And uh, there's actually Lippert Techs here if you yeah. want to go bug them in their booth. <laughs> I'm going to ask them. So. I have a question about my back, so I'm going to ask them. I am going to go visit them this week. But They're speaking on of Lippert, I know they bought Gerard, and this is one of my favorite things. Oh, okay. It's hot water on demand. So somebody like me that likes to take nice, long, hot showers, I never run out if we're not boondocking. Yeah. So if we're at a place like this, I can open up my gray tank. It's just like washing your clothes. You just keep running and running and running and running. So nice. I never run out of hot water. So you're talking 15, 20, 25 minute showers. She jumps in right behind me, and then we wash the dishes and we're good to go. So yeah, no more waiting. No more, you know, you take your shower and then we'll wait for it to fill back up and then I'll okay. take mine. It's just always hot water. And that's by Gerard. That's by Gerard, right. yes. Okay. Which Rupert has bought Gerard is my understanding. So I have not even heard of that brand before. But uh, we love it. There was a, it, it's pressure generated. Like, you know, it's dependent on the pressure. So too much, the water goes past too fast. So it can't get hot enough. Too slow, there's not enough to trigger it to work. So um, we have found, you know, a pressure regulator keeps it from being too fast or too high. Um, okay. But too low, the fix for that is fill your fresh tank and pump off that because your pump is your pump, right? It's right. It's consistent pressure. So that there was a learning curve there at first, but once we figured that out, we're in love with it. Yeah, that's a little hack when you have bad water pressure yeah, at a park. Yeah, fill your tank. Yeah. Fill, fill your, your tank. tank. We fill our tanks a lot. Your Use pump your is going to be your pump. It's yeah. always going to pump at the same, you know, at the same pressure. So yeah. Yeah. One of those, duh. We should have thought of that. But. I I had to do that before I got here yeah. at the last park. <laughs> Low right. water pressure. Well, they got great water pressure here, so we don't have that. Yes. Problem. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. Water pressure is crazy. There's so the, brake the brake booster, booster for the. For the uh, uh, disc brakes right there. Okay, sure. That's where they put mine. Yep. Yeah, right down there. And this is for our hydraulics, for our... For okay, our... so it's interesting. And normally, I would expect uh, some propane right yes. here. Right. Yes. Uh, ours, ours are under in the front, front, in the nose. Okay. So ours are up here. In a nice area where you can get to them, it's pretty easy. And we do typically have gas stops on them, but we were coming from yeah, the so cold. Yeah, so we have gas stops. And uh, okay. in the cold, if it gets too cold, the gas stop doesn't work, so you have to take them off. Okay. Yeah, I know they have new ones out. They were going to give us, yeah. like, some different ones because ours kept shutting off. Yeah. Well, that's what ours would so. do. We were cold, and it kept shutting off. And I'm, he's like, I know we're not out of propane. And so he called, and they were like, yeah, because apparently if you're a science person the properties of propane change when it gets to a certain temperature so right it won't flow through the way it needs to right well i have never seen a bay that looks like this <laughs> well this top bay is made for your back steps the steps on your on your deck oh, so that okay. we have to haul them inside your inside your um in your okay garage. we can just slide them up in there and, and it's gone but we elected to take those out we don't carry those anymore yeah because we want the space we want the space and Okay. The space now. Is being used. For our solar upgrade that we're working okay. on right now. Wow. So right now we have um, two 400 amp hour batteries. We're getting ready to have double that to another 400 or another 800 more. So we'll have a total of 1600 amp hours. And what this is TBB, it's new. Okay, I've not heard of so that. This is brand. new, so we're testing all that out in the United States market right now. Okay, um, everything here is all TBB here. They have the TBB up there for the um, inverter and okay. the solar controller. So we're getting another inverter, some more solar controllers, and some more batteries. And right now we have 200 watts on the roof. I would say you've got room. Oh, yeah, we got there. Room. So this I is mean, perfect for, for putting solar in. It really is. Yeah, you know, you got a little bit of this carpet in here, and 
fits perfect in there. Wow, that's great. And then of course, we still, even if we're out there and we don't have sunlight, we have our 5,500 watt Odin. Ah, just tucked right in there. Yeah, so, all yeah, the propane's in that other one. Did you show that? Yeah, the wow. Yeah, that is, uh, it just like, this seems so much more space than I'm used to seeing. Now, if you didn't have your solar, you can add more chairs in here and you can take stuff out of the out of the bay inside. Well, like what's different from ours is, I think we have the space, but it's just like more room yeah. from underneath right. and it's not set up, get to it. not set up to be usable. Yeah. yeah. So. And this goes way up, I mean, it was way up there. Oh yeah, a lot of room up there. Yeah, I can see we're right. That's great for stairs yes. or chairs or. We used to have all uh, our chairs in there, and then. So yeah. Yeah. So that works out perfect for us right there. Yeah. And that's... of course, one key. One. All. Some key works everything. One key to open them all, huh? <laughs> Don't hit your head. So, uh, what kind of kingpin do you have here? Mori. <laughs> Steam Mori. Standard. So they're rubber. It does not come standard. Okay. Um, we upgraded to this. It's It works on the same. So, if you could see in there, their independent suspension is two, like basically rubber blocks that as you hit, they go like this, right? So, this is the same principle, but it's flat. So, it takes a lot of the chucking out. So, you don't okay. get so much of the. So, it, it's doing this and this all at the same time. So it is a very a much smoother ride. And then on top is one of Lisa's newer. We've had one of these for a while now, testing it for them. And it's one of their favorite products. So they call it a cord keeper. We call it a turtle. Uh, but your cords just wind right up on it. So that's our solar charger cord right here. And this is this oh, magnetically, okay. magnetically attaches. So you can put wow. it on. I have that. this one here for our DC to DC charger. And then I have one underneath. For, your for seven our way. seven way. Okay. So when we're there, they're tucked up. You don't have to fight with the birds that like to nest in the little area. And uh, roll it up. Yeah, it just rolls up. That is really cool. Now, what do you plug that into? That goes the into truck. the back of the truck. So it okay. All for our, our so our, yeah, our alternator okay, will charge I see. the solar up if it's cloudy and we're driving. It gives me 60 amps of charging going down the road. So it's, okay. if it's cloudy outside, the seven way will charge very, very little. That'll give me 60 amps to charge the batteries. So. You know, I have heard of that upgrade. That was one that we talked about doing yeah. at some point. <laughs> yeah. It's a major but, upgrade uh, when you're on the East Coast and it's cloudy or in the East Coast where there's trees and bridges. Uh, uh, right. So you have that sun that's really, really bright and you can charge most of the time going down the road. But when you're on the East Side, there's so many obstacles for, for charging. Sure. So that helps charge it. Plus, you know, your, your generator still charges them up too. So if we have to, we run the generator to charge. Gen We've y. never used a Gen Y. So. We, I've looked at them and I think I like the way they look, but then you got that big bulky piece hanging down, which is okay. another reason to kind of hit your head. You know, you know, people hit their heads on these things all the time. Sure. The less compact and better off it is, you know, I just feel like it's, We've used this, like I said, 36,000 miles back and forth, and we get very little chucking. We do okay. get some, we don't get that much. So. And it was funny, because he said, I don't really know if it's making that big of a difference, but then we had to tow a friend's rig for them. <laughs> they, yeah, they had just the standard basic one that came on it, and he was like, oh my God, this is the roughest rod. And I yeah. said, well, number one, they don't have the pen box. Number two, they don't have the independent suspension. So it's, a, and he's like, wow. Like, you know, when you're difference. in it every day, you think, yeah, it's making a difference. But then when you go back to something that doesn't have any of it, it's like, whoa. You get used huge, to that smooth ride. Right? <laughs> you do. And it was a huge difference. It's crazy. Yeah, that's funny. So I don't have any pluses or minus for Gen Y because we never used them. I just, I'm just afraid of that big bulky looking right. thing sitting there. Yeah. Plus, it looks like it has a lot more weight. And wait. And okay. You wait your I mean, you know, I don't know, but. Right. We've seen them. We just, we don't have one. I don't, it, I don't think. We even know anybody personally that does have one, so to even ask, but. Right, a couple of our other tours have had them and swore by them, okay. and so now we just have to like, okay, what direction like are we going to go? Just go with one you like. Just have to pick right, something. yeah, figure it out. They all have so. the pluses and minuses. So it's just and, what you want, what you want it to do. And actually, the viewers, uh, if you've got one of these uh, kingpins or, or hitch combinations, definitely let us know yeah. what your favorite yeah. is well, in yeah. the comments. And especially if you've had both, both. Of them. like if you can compare, you know, that's all. I'm always interested to hear that. You've had one and you've had the other. Right. Now give me your honest opinion on which one you like best. You really need that. Yeah. On the same camper. 
because you can have <laughs> right? a smaller camper and it doesn't beat you well, to death still, as much like, too. You would so. know, if you had both, yeah, if you have both of them on the same camper, you would know that this one was way, you know, a, a softer ride or rougher ride. So yeah. right. I'd be interested. Interested to know. Just That's where batteries storage. would normally go. Oh, okay. So you've got but a little little extra front. room. Yeah right here what is this that's our fans for all the, the solar. solar for the solar controllers to help them blow out some heat if they need okay it to keep it cool so they have the fans come here and of course it blows out of this vent right here to keep it cool if it starts getting warm nice and of course we carry all of our 50s and 30s adapters all the dog bones. Dog they just bones. hang out there it's and a little toolbox <laughs> just looks like it fit perfect in there so we just threw a toolbox mm -hmm. in there just for your outside tools if you need to sell them. It's so different not seeing the propane tanks right. there. I know, right? I, I like it's to have crazy. the propane tanks there. because They're, they're easy easier to get, to get to here than in the front. That is his, he right. would rather have them over here. But And this is our one downfall. That's all we have. Wow, it's packed full too. Yeah, uh, again, this reminds uh, <laughs> me of ours on our Momentum 381. It's just a yeah, very little storage, not enough to even put a tray in there, huh? I know. I keep so. looking at it. I'm like, maybe a tray would fit, but I, yeah. I'm not even sure. So. Yeah, uh, but you got the extra one in the back. That yep. was really cool, and uh, so. You make you 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 make make it work. That's that's all you can do. You right. Can, you have to give up some to get some. Exactly. And, and that, that's RV life, you know. If you're looking for the same room you've got in your two or three thousand square foot house, you're not going to find gonna, it. You're not going <laughs> to yeah. find it in an RV. I don't care what brand <laughs> <No. hand> it is. <laughs> Just not going to happen. Well, shall we take a let's, look inside? Let's come on in. All right. It's a little cooler in here. Good deal. Wow, this looks amazing in Thanks. here, guys. Thank you. Very homey. Thank you. That's our goal. We're trying to make it not look a, like a traditional toy hauler. And that's well, and it's our home, right? So you want it to look like home. So we've been doing a lot. Um, Lisa's been doing a lot. I didn't do a whole lot. Curtains, paint. We redid the fireplace. We swapped out the furniture. So we've done a few things. Um, yeah, and those fixtures can't cool. be standard no, either, right? we've had those from Rec Pro. Um, okay. We do have a link for them, so I'll give you that. But they are RV lights. But we had just the little puck lights is what was in there. And we replaced them with those. Um, also, the furniture came from Rec Pro. And Everything uh, based on this side here is gone from Rec Pro. Yeah. All down to the, the day-night shades. Uh, okay. These are all Rec Pro stuff here. Um, the lights, the furniture, these end they tables. Have, like everything all RV. All the pieces and parts and accessories. Wow. And that is cool. The love seat as well? Yes. Yes, the love okay. seat. And so, so here's one of my favorite things. I... As you can see, we have no table, which which we didn't most use. Thing most people have, so that's okay. Um, but we would our kids sometimes will travel with us. You know, they're grown, so sometimes, but not all the time. And with our last toy hauler, they would use the back, you know, because there's bunks and whatever to sleep in. But we would do a couple one night stays on the way to where we were going, which would mean you'd have to unload the golf cart or the bikes or whatever you've got for the beds to come down for one night, then just to load them right back in. Mm -hmm. So this floor plan, that sofa is a pullout. So when we're doing okay. a one night stay, they can stay there because it folds out to a full size bed. And then wow. when we get where we're going, they can have their own private space in the back, their own bedroom with a half bath. So that was or if they big... want to sleep on a recliner sometimes they sleep on a recliner yeah too, my so. son would always my, son, my, my kids would always say mom mom don't un, don't unpack the golf cart don't unpack the bikes for one night i'll just sleep on the couch i'll sleep on the recliner which is fine but now that they can have a bed to sleep in that's even better it doesn't or if look they all like a... come. now i know it right like it doesn't furniture. look like an RV. right yeah it, so it... that plus this open floor plan Oh, oh, I <laughs> better not show that to Cherie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So Look at that room. So not typical toy hauler no. storage space um, wow. inside. We have more space inside than we do outside for those kids. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. That so, is great. The combination of the sleeper sofa, the open floor plan, the amazing pantry. I was like, yeah, this is it. And... I will say, I said it kind of to myself earlier, usually when you come to an RV show, you say what? Oh, I wish this had been out when we bought ours. Oh, we just got a new one last year and I have yet to see anything that I like better than this. 
that is. And they haven't changed this floor plan much. This, this is still a really good seller for Fusion. And, okay. And I can see like why. Um, and a lot of people, the, the only down that people have is that there isn't a dinette because there are still people that really use their dinette, not just for a desk, but, but to eat at. Um, but the Fusions do come with a table. It's just a fold-up table that's a standalone. Take outside, put it on the deck, put it in the garage. So you could bring it in here and use it okay. as a table if you wanted to. So, or TV um, trays. We use TV trays sometimes when we're having a big meal. If we're just sure. eating pizza, we're just sitting right there and putting the, putting the plates in our lap. But if you're having something steak and you got to cut it up, then we'll put a put a TV tray. Well, or And if you had a family, like a lot of family, you know, it's not just the two of us. Um, kids, you know, make more messes than we do sometimes. Um so yeah, they might would want a table, and a lot of people just eat outside. So they don't care. <laughs> but that's the one thing that people are like. Well, you don't have a dinette. But that gives my us question that, is, do you really use your dinette? And most of, of them say some no. people carry mm -hmm. dogs in their toy hours. They don't carry toys. They have dogs. So sure. this gives a big open area that you can put a big rug down, and the dogs can lay right here, and they're not underneath your feet because you don't have a dinette too. So if you're looking for a dog hauler. <laughs> this could be right? a, this could be a perfect floor plan too because well, the dogs can lay and you still have room to walk around. Too. And we used to travel. We had three dogs and we used to travel with all three of them. And at the time, we had an island. You know, they're dogs. They're they're not intentionally in your way. But they. Are. But it didn't matter which way I wanted to go. They were always underfoot. And so, in my head, in this one, I was going to put the dog's bed in front of the fireplace, and she would lay there, which. We all know she really wouldn't. She would lay wherever she wanted to. Right. But there's plenty of floor space here that she could lay wherever she wants. And I'm not, she's not in the way. You know, we can still work around. And like when our grand, we had our grandson for a week. He had stuff everywhere, toys and things. Everywhere. But still, like there was room for him to spread out and play. You know, it wasn't cramped. Right. So not the traditional toy plan. hauler floor plan. And we still love, love. Right. It. Look <laughs> at this space in it's, here. It's crazy. So, yeah. So we lose space outside, but we gain it inside where we are most of the time. So when you're living in it every single day, you want space inside. And this is a toy hauler. Can you believe it? Yes. Right. And then, so you have to make use of what space you do have in the toy hauler. So our loft has become kind of a storage area because nobody sleeps up there. So we're good with that. Same um, here. Yeah, we same can kind of loft. We'll go back and check. We have a residential fridge, so that's awesome too. And that runs off the solar. Yes. Okay. And then we converted, I think I said earlier, we converted our back, but our garage into a master, but we didn't, what a lot of people do is take like the couch seating off the bottom and just use the top for their bed. Well, I wanted to keep the top because we use it for storage. More storage. So we took the couch portion out and there's parts and I can give you a link that you can order the parts through Lippert. Um, they if gave you have me the happy a, jack. Yeah. If you have the happy jack, they have a conversion kit. So you can take the couches out and get a second platform. They don't have the platform. Like you have to build one or get one from your manufacturer. But we have the same platform, the top and the bottom. Our bed's on the bottom, storage on the top. Still the bed can go up and we can use the rooms. Oh, I can't so wait, wait to wait see for that. that. You can't see that right now. Oh, come on and wait. see it. Come on. It's the best So part. I have a good list of props because she's the one that did all this color changing and making it kind of look like a farmhouse uh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And then we took all of our blind, all of our balance and stuff off and she made all these curtains. So okay. all these curtains are homemade straight from here with no sewing machine. No sewing. No anything. No she sat right necessary. here in these Yay. sat right here in these chairs and made all these yeah. curtains wow. to bring everything in. So great job. And we also did so behind the TV while we're talking about the Reno. Used to be just a flat panel because this is our outside kitchen on the back side, right? Okay. So we did some digging. It's not finished yet. Oh we my just gosh! Did it. But this shelf goes all the way across. And then down here, this goes all the way through. And I have pull-out panels on either side to, to get to it and access it, but not make it look bad. So did not. you have to open that up? Or? Yes, we opened that up. Yeah. So they never intended that to be no. storage. That's a hitting spot and so, that we found. Well, but here's, so let me let me put a plug in for, for Keystone. Well, first of all, you see how big this slide is. Yes. And you see this everything is a that's huge in this slide. slide right. With a pantry and a fridge. So there's a lot of weight on this. And, and I know that if you open that, if you put that space, people will put heavy things, right? That's a good place for your dumbbells. So we're not going to put, right? <laughs> we're not going to put heavy things like paper towels would be good there because they don't weigh a lot. I'm sure they didn't utilize that space because they didn't want any more weight on the slide. Like that would make sense to me. So like when we're here, we'll keep our laptops up there. Um, you know, just a place to put things that they're not sitting out in the way. But this was a huge find. To, to find the storage Love back there. Love that. Secret so, storage. Secret storage back there. 
and it goes all the all way, way across. across. Wow, that Both is sides, top and bottom. Yeah. That is not so. a tiny find. No, that's, that's a, a big, big find. That's a huge find. There's a so, lot of tiny finds we found yeah. in here that we, we okay. opened up too, but that's that's your biggest find. It's kind of like kind of like you you're going on a, a treasure hunt and you open things up and it's like wow and every manufacturer does it. Yes. If you pull some panels apart, you can see a lot of extra yeah, room. There's always little spaces. Uh, a lot of times it's in the crawl space. When you when you start to look behind there for your water leaks, right? You push that, you push wall, push back, that wall back, back space, and you gain right? more space, and that's what we did in the front there too. So okay, we gained a lot of space, but now we got to be careful not to just add a lot of weight to it. Well, so. yeah, and that's what I'm gonna say. If anybody has this and they want to do that, the space is there, but don't overweigh it because I feel certain that's why they didn't use it because this is already with the okay. pantry that you could overload and the fridge is heavy, the stove, the, like it's a lot of weight here. So I feel like that's probably why they didn't leave it open. So if you want to do it, which we did, be smart about it. Put light stuff in there. So before we go back here and, and blow and show everybody ah. that, this is our trip since February 1st. We of have been oh, that's very last cool. year. So we have been back and forth to the West Coast twice. We still have a couple more pins to put in here. But this is where I'm always wondering, how do you guys put your pins in? Is no, it one night here we stay? Go. Or is Duh, it you drive yeah, yeah, through? Yeah. There's a lot of other things I'm not going to say on tape. But, <laughs> so our, our rule is we have to sleep one night in the town. So it's okay. just an overnight stay. Not a so drive some through. of these could be could it be harvest host for one night, one night, whatever. So I always like to know, and I know it's our map, and that's what we got on our video. It's your map. You can do what you want to do, but I want to know what and everybody I know, does. So. Right? Like, it's not like it's a rule that I'm asking what are the rules. It's just like, how do you do it? Because I'm always curious. Because yes. everybody has their own little thing. Some people say you have to stay a week. So I'm going to jump in here on this because actually uh, we asked this topic in our Double Decker bus tour. Okay. Right here. Dane was actually asking people about yep. this. My vote on this was if you are there for any length of time... You, you don't have to spend the night. It's just like, okay. hey, hey, we're here, you know. Right. Not so, so many hours. So driving through? Driving through, sure. Okay. Well, okay. yeah, we've had a lot of them then. But. Well, you know, okay. if you drove all the way across <laughs> Texas, you know, then you were clearly in Texas. But, and, and so, like, clearly these aren't the only places we were. But if there's a dot, we stayed at least one night. Okay. It could be a Harvest Host. It could be a Walmart parking lot. Um, but at least one night. Okay. But then some people are like, no, it's got to be a week. And some people are like, no, if you just drive through or if you if you just cut the corner of Mississippi for like 15 <laughs> minutes, it counts as being in Mississippi. And I know yeah. since you've been boondocking a lot, I know you know what that pin right there is. Oh, yeah. That's Magnolia <laughs> Beach. Lo love that. Magnolia yeah. Beach. So we're yeah. headed right back down there again. Yeah. Um, February, March. Was, March. Yeah. I mean, as a kid, I was, I shouldn't say a kid, but I did you know, a hand and feet in each one of these. Yeah, the four that's corners. That's we did that this year. <laughs> okay. We did that this year. That was a purple spot. That's a purple marker right there. So yeah. we were there. Uh, you know what? I love this. Yes. It, Sheree and I have not done anything like this. I think the traditional system looks a little... Uh, like the it, stickers that you do it, the In my state. opinion, looks a little cheap. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't, I don't know, it wouldn't fit in a classy room like this. Right, and this people put them on the outside, and he's like, no stickers outside. And and so it was funny, because I kept looking at them, and I'm like, those are really cool. It, and then my kids were like, what can we get mom for Mother's Day? And he's like, she wants this map. It's like, like artwork. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, we perfect. like it. The now, colors go well. I don't and, think and so we're going to be able to drive it. down to that one, though. We're going to try. Right. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's it's there. There. So it's maybe. A possibility. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe we we'll have to fly yeah. down to that to fill that one, but we will. We will probably fill this up. So it's the it's the year. camp. It's the RV map. So this is the places that and this RV has been. Where did you get this? <sighs> well, that's the hard part. So it's a place. I, I can give you the link. It's like Woody's Wood, but it's um. The, the company is in the Ukraine. So really? since the war, when they ordered mine, it was during the, and that's how we found out. We were trying to find out when it was going to ship. And he was like, well, kind of got a war going on right now. Um, <laughs> we're, in Ukraine. we're in Ukraine. I was like, oh my God. Like, you know, we had no idea. And it did still come rather quickly. But I know since then people have asked and I've given them the link and they're not available right now just because okay. of what's going on. So okay, um, well we'll put it down there below just in case. Yeah, and it'd be a nice way to support them as well. Absolutely. ordering from there because so. we're happy with it. It came in like six pieces, and it came with a double sided sticky tape. So, so that's on double sided. It, and it never moves. Move. <laughs> it never moves. Wow. It stays right there. 
Um, and it all just kind of snapped together and went up. So I've been very pleased with it. I love the quality of it. We're happy with it. And it's just, you know, a little thing. Yeah, it's beautiful. So the only things that do move. Yeah, so I'm just going to show you that because yeah. you, you asked about our cups. So here, here's our cups. They and sit this, just like that. Don't that, mind my mess. That's how they ride. Look at that. They, they never move. move. They don't move. I move this picture frame only because it's got glass in the front. I set it on the couch. Um, and I move my knife block because sometimes it gets a little crazy and wants to so jump the coffee around. coffee pot stays. I take the glass pot off the coffee pot and put it in a cupboard. But the coffee pot, my sir, everything else just, I mean, not the soap. I drop it in the sink. But like this, this stays here. This stays here minus the pot. Is this Velcro down or no? No, it's got the little rubber Oh, mat. it's got the feet? Okay. That's it. Or I see what you're and saying. And it just yeah. doesn't, it, everything stays. Independent suspension helps that everything These stay. These things up here Wow, stay. that's great. All this stayed. <coughs> None of that moves. Now, she has the double-sided I have the little museum on. putty stuff, but... Oh. Museum putty is the best. Yeah. All these stay right here. All these little pieces came from the keys down there when we saw you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all these are stuck up here with the, the museum putty and none of it moves. None of it moves. Yeah, Lisa, tell everybody about this right here. So, this... a year ago we were in the Keys and I found this piece of, we'll call it driftwood, submerged in the water. I pulled it up and I said, I'm gonna do something with this. So and for of a course, year we've Well, this is that. our banter. He says trash, I say treasure. It's our it's our thing. Like it's our, I'm like, we're going to the so, antique shop. So He's like, think? to buy more junk. And I'm like, no, it's a treasure. We got to ask, is it junk? It's a treasure. Look or at it. it. Treasure? Look at it. It's a treasure. So we got <laughs> it. And and like quickly I decided it was going to be my new mantelpiece when we redid the um, fireplace. But what I didn't know... I was worried when they had to cut the end off that it would just crumble, right? But it actually, and I'm, I'm no scientist, but it's like it's petrified. It's, it's so very hard. Very hard. They almost burnt up a blade cutting it, just that one little strip. Wow. And um, bent a nail like it looked like a U and broke a bit, a drill bit, trying to drill through it. So it's crazy hard from being So we have no this. idea how sure, old something like... Sure, it came off like, like a boat or something, but it's just... We have no so idea how old this is, and we don't know anything about wood. So we would love for rings. somebody... Because yeah, you can see how tight, how tight the rings are. are. Right. So we would love for somebody that knows so something cool about wood, little, what they... Little, what it's they might treasure. know about it. A, a very hard wood yes. it's uh, a treasure. for sure. I'll give her this one. This one <laughs> may be a treasure. It's a treasure. And it and it's hard, really it's well. hard for me to say, and we keep this little piece for, for looks. Oh, but. and these are all my little pieces from, I like the beachy area, so these are all my little And she changed that to chalk Treasures. Out. My what? Chalk. Oh, so yeah, this is the, um, I don't know where it is. This is the chalkboard paint when I redid that. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know where my chalk is. My daughter had it. So once we go back to the treasures while she's looking for that treasures and junk, she okay. goes to all kinds of antique stores. This Look is very, that. very, very old. Not. How cool. Wow. I've, never, I've never seen it. And nice. it works in the RV. Yeah. That, so, yeah. that is cool. So this is our chalkboard for notes, love you, we need milk, whatever it might be. Yeah, and that's just just paint. That's it's just, just paint. paint. It's called chalkboard paint. You do a couple coats. I did a coat of magnetic paint in there too, but that, I didn't get enough. Work. But if it, see, it works, but if it's too heavy of a magnet, here, it'll fall. Oh, okay. This is what you were that talking about, the four corners, corners, which you were just sure. talking yeah. about. Right. But this, this will stay up there sometimes. It'll stay up, okay. and something thin like this will stay, but like a heavy magnet won't, because I, I think okay. I needed another coat. But I'll use the chalkboard more than anything, so just thought it was cool. We ripped a panel, because this used to have another panel, like this, and I pulled it off, hoping that it would be a solid piece behind it. <laughs> so what you're, sure. seeing, what, you're seeing, was. what you're seeing here right now is, just because you buy an RV, doesn't mean you have to keep it to look like an RV. You can change this RV so many different ways to make it yours. Right. I mean, you and, can't and move a wall or, well, you, I mean, some people can. can, but like, you know, the slide is what it is, but you can make this, this, you know, and not look like the standard plug-in RV fireplace. So you can make it your own, just like you would at home. Right. That used to be a bigger fireplace, right? Well, this used well, to come all, this, this piece here used to come all the way up to here. And okay. And we cut it down and bring it down so I can put a sound bar up here a little bit later on. Okay. Uh, but it was just, it was so much... And this was even this color. It was a different color, but it was so much there. It just kind of looked plain. So we wanted to bring it down, look at, make it look. Like so this little radio was in it. This so, this radio was like right here, and there's speakers on either side. 
and that's all it was and it was kind of like eh you know but now it looks more like a fireplace okay like, so like it would at home you know like, so that's the standard fireplace this is the standard, standard fireplace. fireplace okay is that furion Oh, that's Greystone. I don't know who makes that. Hey, we had this okay. conversation yeah, the other day. Know. But I will tell you something I heard in the um, show just today. People say, why do they give me more space there? Why do we have to have a fireplace? Well, if you're full time and you're into a power, if you're, you're hooked up to power, that's free heat. It is. That will heat your, this whole room up and you're not burning your propane. So no, that's not a waste of space. And no, even if you're weekend campers and you camp in the summertime, there is days it gets kind of chilly in July and August, some different areas. That will knock the chill off the air. So it's not wasted. A lot of people don't realize that it actually heats. Right. You know, they think it's just like the TV that looks yeah. like fire. It, it's, it's, a, it's one of those Amish heaters, basically. You know, it's just a space heater. Yeah. It has actually started chilling this week. Yes. Oh, yes. At the show. And that I've been using that uh, this week so far. Right, you Finally. don't need the furnace. Yep. You just need a little to take the chill off in the morning. And right, free. Yep. Free you, heat. You, you, right. you, free you pay heat. for your spot. <laughs> right. I pay for the gas, right. too. Right. 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 Don't, burn, don't burn your propane up if you can use that to keep it yeah, warm. Yeah, propane's gone up in price. Oh, so. yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, yeah. That's I'm going to turn it off because it's kind of warm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, beautiful living area, guys. Nice. I mean, this is... Uh, we got one more thing coming. She's got a big rug that she wants to put down here. Oh, room. okay. Okay. She found I one the other found day. found it. So this is the story of my life. <laughs> I found the rug and I'm like, oh, this is it. And it was an odd shape. And I said, I'm not sure it's going to fit. So I came back and measured it. And I went back the next day. Gone. Oh, gone. no. Yeah. So it would have fit. So I have her looking for another one. Similar design. The same shape. The same size. So that it will fit. But... He said, like, why don't you buy it? I said, what if it didn't fit? No, I don't want to do with it. So, yeah. Lesson learned. Should have taken it back. That's the lesson. You know, I am going to have to see if Cherie can come by and take a look at Absolutely. this. Absolutely. I mean, I think she would be really excited about seeing what you guys I'm have so done. excited with it. Like, so, I just, I love it. I, mean, I love the floor plan and the renovations are coming together well. Yeah. Yeah. This is great she because needs to come by. Uh, we've looked at some regular. Uh, you know, our fifth wheel RVs right. without the toy hauler, and she's kind of liking that, but then it's like, well, we want that separate space yes. for the office, yeah. so it's just like, what is the solution? But I mean, this, this space, yes. oh my gosh. Well, and in the bedroom, <laughs> we're going to do two flip up desks. I haven't done that yet, but that's okay. something else, so then we will have additional office space. Okay. Um, want to get it done. I have some of the pieces, but not all of them yet, so. So we're going up to the original living area then, right? So yeah, here's the original bedroom. And we talked outside about our slide is currently stuck in. So my bed's not even really in here. The mattress is under and all the stuff that goes under our bed and some of our closet stuff is here. So it's kind of hard to see, but when the slide is out, you have all that room. So sure. when it's back together and the slide is out, the foot of the bed is here. So you have all this space to get through right we have a washer dryer prep in this closet um you know this is kind of our closet area washer okay. dryer would go there we don't have one um and then over here i wish i could get to this to show you though so wow I got the cubes from ikea and put them in both sides over here for bends for storage you know sweaters and stuff that doesn't need to necessarily hang um so well there's one side of it but there's another side that looks just like it. Um, and when the bed's out, of course, you can get to everything way better. That's a lot of great space. It is. We do have, yeah, we do. We really do have a lot of space. My bat, if I had to have one bad thing about my camper, it's the bathroom is a little small. That's the room you spend the least amount of time in. So if something has to be not your favorite, that would be it, right? Right. Um, well, this is not bad. The, the mean... bathroom's good. In our last Fusion, we had a bigger vanity, and it kind of got me spoiled. So okay. the vanity, I guess, is probably what it is, if that was a little bit bigger. But, I mean, the shower's good, and it, you know, like, it's the smallest room, but it's the least, we spend the least amount of time there, so it's okay. Right, and well, and you guys are basically sleeping in the back. This is like almost the views are bad. 
sure. sleep up here. Okay. The views are good. We sleep back there so we can drop the deck and see all the cool stuff. So Okay. And when guests come, we sleep up here and they have their own little private living space back there. So that's nice. I can see how deep that slide yeah. is right there. Yeah, how much right more up. room that, you know, it would open up in here. Yeah. But uh it's okay. It's yeah. It's going to be in a couple of weeks. Should be back all fixed up and ready to roll. Okay. It just just part of RV life, you know. You've got That's it. Uh, you plan and then you replan. <laughs> life happens. Right. There's usually a, a project to do or something breaking somewhere. But even... you know what? You still have it in your sticks and bricks every day. That's what I say. You know, every like, day. especially people for don't us. Think about it. We have a house that was built in 1948, so we're still constantly working on it every single day so yes this is a 2022 and we're working on it but we had a brand new house too that we worked on well so, and you know like your rv goes through an earthquake every time you're going down the road your your sticks and bricks depending on where you live <laughs> doesn't do it every day anyway you know so it's it's got to go through a lot so so now we're going to take you to the, <gasps> the bonus room okay great this was our first project Wow, look at it. this. So we use the top platform for storage. I see And of course, that. it'll come down, you know, because it's a bunk. Um, the bottom is, this is a regular queen-size mattress, like a residential queen-size mattress. Um, we got it from RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, and we love it. Uh, we just recently got new pillows, and we love them, too. Um, and then it still, of course, can go up. So it comes up here so you can still get out to the back deck. I have my curtains, my blackout curtains for some privacy back there. Okay. And for, and I'm going to show you this because I don't like to make beds, but we have this thing called a Betty. You ever heard of a Betty? Do y'all have a Betty? Uh, uh, a betty? We don't have it, but we have heard of it. So um, basically it's he makes the beds. It's kind of like now. a sleeping bag. You just unzip it. All the way down, and you and get in the bed. And you pull the little flap out so the blanket flap comes down. So you Look get at in that. Time. So if you don't want a sleeping bag area, or some people don't want it, you can still bring the zipper it goes all, all the way. Across. But Each the, side comes down, and they meet in the middle, so you could really So it's it. real easy in, when you're making a bed. You just take this, and you slide it down on all four corners. It's okay. like you put a fitted sheet on the bed, and then the whole bed's made. The sheets, the comforter, everything is on the bed now. And you just, and flip, then that you just under. flip this under. And you zip it up and your bed is done. And that is made. Wow. Wow. That is super so we cool. Have some here and one on our front front bedroom where oh, we yeah, sleep that was on one there. of the piles up there is the comforter. Um But it's so much easier to make the bed even being this way up against that wall back here. You just zip it when you get out, we zip the side here and the bed is made. So those oh are my also, gosh. That, I, I, you know, I guess they're considered upgrades because the but mattress is, is a definite upgrade because our mattress when we got our it was horrible. And for us us living on the road our mattress came in a box, you know, just like those those beds in a box. You, you, you know, open it unroll. up and it unrolls. Is it like a memory foam? It's a, um, so it, it has coils in it. Okay. It has like a cool gel top. So if you it's put your cool hand on it touch. backwards, it's nice and cool. Okay. Okay, great. It's, Be a nice, it's a nice mattress. We love it. And it came, the box was like this. It's about a 300 pound box. <laughs> it feels it really box. heavy because it's, you know, awkward. But, um, yeah. So RV mattress by like Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bedding. Bedding. And then this is a Betty's on the top. We love our Betty's. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that but, um, is we also cool. Have, this is kind of a storage cabinet at the moment, but we do have a half bath in here. Okay. So can, I'll do that so you can get in there. Okay, yeah. It reminds me a lot oh, of, uh, yeah, what what's in the 381 Momentum. And, right, some people are not using those yeah. and it's all storage, storage. Just pack oh yeah some people up. turn them into closets we will use it when we have we have people sleeping here okay. it is nice when the kids come they can sleep here they have a bath that's there you know like um our kids are grown and they're married so you know they come with their their wife and then they have their own bathroom still they can come up there to shower but in the middle of the night you get to the bathroom or whatever like you have your own place okay um, so it's nice they can have their own like they can get inside and outside without disturbing anybody but then if they want to come in and be with everybody else, they still can. So it's like a guest room. Right. Like, uh, I'm using the main bathroom now, but Sheree's coming. So I'm... You know, <laughs> there you go. Bathroom. You're moving back here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you yeah. know. And so, yeah, you can both get ready at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And, you know, it just, it, it makes a lot of sense to have that. Yeah. 
The other thing I noticed in here is all the windows yeah. back yes. here. I mean, they really did, you know, want to make this a usable room. Right. It is. So yeah. you have the here. back deck down out there and out west where nobody is. You lay on that bed right there. You got 13 foot bedroom. Wall to wall windows, the deck down, the breeze blowing. And the four season doors, so there are windows, but then they have screens as well. So if you open, if you have the screens there and the windows open, this is a beautiful place when it's when the weather is nice. Oh, and you just said something else that we're dying for that we can't seem to get upgraded on our current RV. You don't have the the four season so doors. we've got the plastic, oh, you know, thing, yeah. and we oh man, we. We yeah. really want yes. that. Yes. And, and they are nice. Uh, so imagine backed up to Magnolia Beach. Right. Back down, right on the water. The breeze blowing through Definitely the Definitely a place we slept back here. Yes. <laughs> that That it's is the great. It's and nice, then she so. put all the shiplap on the wall here. Yeah. So this okay. Is all the shiplap here. Okay. And here, as you as a toy hauler guy knows, this back bedroom gets very, very cold. Right. This garage has one heat vent that's this big around. Just like everybody else. So we, <laughs> right. we put a portable heater on the wall, you just turn it on, and instantly you know, okay. it's hot. It's, blowing it's hot kind of just like your fireplace is in the front. It okay. All the power, space so it's but it's mounted and, and that's it suburban. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. Very cool. So it keeps us warm in the cold nights back here. Don't throw any okay. gas. We could just turn that on and it keeps Again, this room electric free heat, no propane involved. So, yeah. Yeah, this Which is. It, it sets up nice, like I said, the bed goes, you know, the bed goes all the way up out of your way. It's done. And so the bed goes all the way up. Oh, and right. It goes up, you just walk underneath it and you go outside. Yeah, you got all that storage underneath there, yeah. storage up top. Or you could make that another bed if you needed it. Yeah, yeah. Right. It still could be a bunk. It just, we don't use it for that. So. Right. I don't think Harold and Cindy did that, no, they, right? They took the bottom. They took the bottom out and made that their bed. So they okay. just have the one bed platform. Okay. We have some ideas what we want to try to do to redo this whole bed a different way. We got some partners going to work with us to make it more usable. We'll let you know when we do we'll that. Okay. That's well, going to be nice. We'll record it. <laughs> well, it's really great that you guys are working with some of the RV companies yes. uh, with these ideas and, yes. you know, having these ideas and then having companies that are like, hey, we could, we could check that out. You know, we might be able to do that. Absolutely. Because there's all these pain points with RVing because it is a house on wheels, things are breaking, things can be uncomfortable, and just the smallest little solution if it gets rid of a pain point. Right. The simplest thing sometimes. Right, like all of these like uh, door and step upgrades that you've right. got. I mean, and you think, oh, it, it, but it's just the little things. So I tell you, when you're camping, it's the little things that really add That's up why we RV. turned our rig into the mobile showroom. Okay. Because people like you have been RVers for so long, didn't even notice some of the things that we have. You didn't even know they're there. So we still learn every single day by watching people back in and how they back in and what kind of stuff that they use. Right. So this is being a mobile showroom. You can go on our website now and, and you'll find out where we are certain times of the year and you can come see the inside of it. You can feel the, the mattress. You can feel the bedding. You can feel the... Whatever you're interested Whatever in. Whatever you're interested in, you can come and see any it. Any of the add-ons that are here or even the fusion itself you know like if you we go to rv shows right you go to rv shows but there are places that people don't go to rv shows because they're not in every town we bring the rv show to you so if you know maybe you're interested <laughs> you in go. seeing this particular floor plan or a fusion just to see what it is even if it was a different floor plan we're bringing it and you're more than welcome to schedule an appointment and come check it out in person so that's it brings the opportunity to people but it also brings the opportunity back to some of the companies that we work with to say, hey, Tom was over today and we were looking at this and he said, well, wouldn't it be cool if do this. you could do this with that? And when he said that, it was like, oh my God, that's genius. So then we come back to these companies that we work with and say, hey guys, how about this? And, and you know, that's, that's where it all starts. That's where the ideas go. And we, we pride ourselves in only having products that we use and love and we pride ourselves on working with companies that genuinely are interested in what they can do to make things better so if you so, see it in this rig on this rig around this rig or you hear us talking about it we have it we, we use, use it, it every day because if, if and i tell people if they give me that vacuum and i don't like it it's coming out so if it's on here we use it and i don't want you to it. see it and think oh well that must be great because they're using it 
And really, I hate it. Like, that's that's not honest and that's not... Because this is our life. We live in this every yeah. single day. And I'm not laying on a mattress that's going to give me a backache because you gave <laughs> right. me a mattress. I'm not going to do that. So, yeah. no. right. so here we enjoy it. And uh, speaking of the vacuum, what is it? And you like it's it? It's a shark. Um, okay. I do like it. We looked at, like, the ones Dyson? that are like... Yes, the, it, the cordless Dyson. And I heard mixed reviews about it that like it has to charge this much time you have to run it completely dead all these things i'm like well i'm not gonna vacuum the camper it's not gonna run it completely dead so then i've got to keep up with that and i don't want the hassle this one i can plug it in here and i can do all the way to my bedroom and all the way back here we do have a central vac i don't use the central vac but the central vac has a little kick plate that if you're sweeping with a broom you can sweep it in i do use that there's one down here and on the steps and then there's one up on the bedroom level in the bathroom. So okay. anywhere, well, we don't have carpet. So anywhere you could sweep and sweep into those, I do use those. But to vacuum, vacuum, I haven't mounted it yet in this one. I haven't figured out where I want to mount it. But it has a little mount that you can hang it on the wall. So it sits right here. <laughs> and when we're traveling, I lay it flat so it won't rip a hole in the wall. But yeah, that's... It's not cordless, but I like it. It works. And then what we'll do is we will put uh, links to your website and your social media and okay. like any of your favorite videos down below in the comments, okay. uh, the pinned comment, and also the description so people can find you guys and follow you guys. Perfect. Perfect. Wow, this is really comfy to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice break. It's been a long day awesome. walking a show and then coming in here. It's a lot of walking, so yeah. we need a little bit of a break. Right, exactly. So... A lot of people wonder, well, why choose this lifestyle over maybe just regular travel, flying somewhere, driving somewhere, getting a, a hotel? So why did you choose the RV lifestyle? So I used to not be, a, I still don't think I'm a germaphobe, but I worked with a girl whose husband was a pilot and she used to say, don't touch things in the hotel don't touch this, don't touch that, throw the comforter in the floor, it's nasty, it's dirt, like the whole, and I was like, wow, obsessed much? But since we travel in our RV, I'm very much like, because I can still see the places and meet the people, but I could stay in my home. You know, like, it's still home, and, and like, people at home, they'll, are you on vacation? Like, no, I'm not on vacation. We're still working. We're still doing our thing. But as you see, we've turned this into our home. Right. You, so that's what we just videoed. So it's not like, it's not like your hotel, and it's not much like a regular camper going down the road. This is our home now, and we consider it home. It's just on wheels. And our yeah. our biggest thing is every day our scenery changes. So if I don't like our neighbor, tomorrow I just move. And when you have a three hundred thousand dollar house at home, or a million dollar house, or sixty thousand dollars, you can't right. just move. Right. So, we really like the, the the people we have met on the road. It's just been we like the, the best. place. So the places, and that's our thing: the people and the places. But like the people you meet, RV people are just awesome. Like they just are, and they're so kind and giving and and helpful, and everybody gets along, and everybody wants to help one another. And the places that you can go and see. You know, by the time you've a family vacation, you pay for airfare and hotel and rent a car and all the things, you can't afford to go to so many places before you're out of money or time off from work. But if you can work while you travel, you can do it in an RV. I mean, fuel's expensive, let's be real, but there are cheap ways to camp and you take your home with you. So you get to meet all the people, see all the places from the comfort of your home. Well, you literally could pay zero for camping overnight or right. hundreds of dollars a night just your choice so we'll talk about that map that we were showing you that <laughs> whole map we started in indiana went down to virginia to see our kids went down i don't know if we made it to florida or not we went to georgia to texas out west to vegas area montana back to indiana it took us about six weeks and we paid I think I think six nights seven nights total That's all that we was paid it for. so between thousand trails <laughs> which was free free um and boondocking spots that were free and you know and a cabela's parking lot or a bass pro or you know all the places that you could stop for overnight stays we didn't it, it didn't cost that like fuel fuel is the expense and the places like, that we did have to pay some expense. of the boondocking places they were between three and ten dollars a night so okay you're so out still, to magnolia, a magnolia beach was zero then we went out to a place out in vegas area where i think it was three dollars a night right six dollars a night 
Then we went to Utah. Utah was ten dollars a, a night. So amazing pictures there, though. Like it was wow. just. A, they said just stay in one night. I'm like I could stay for a month. Mm-hmm. Like no, two nights, please. We'll stay two nights, but it was only ten bucks. Now there was no hookups, but it's okay. Like the Milky Way was literally right there. Like. Right, everyone's like, oh, the Milky Way's always there. I'm like, yeah, but when you go outside and it's so dark that you can see all the stars, yeah. and literally the Milky Way's like right over your camper. It's oh, like, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. And you can't, you can't put a price now, on that. Now, I could spend two, $300 a night at this nice hotel with a pen, penthouse and all that, but you're not going to get those views. You're not going to see that. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather spend $10 and have that view. Get away from the light pollution. Get away from all yes. light pollution and yes. noise. It was so quiet. We, we were laying in the back bed with the deck down. And I said, like, do you literally. hear that? And she said, what? I said, you can almost hear your heartbeat. Like, it's there's so just nothing, quiet. It's just quiet. Yeah. And I've never, so we've never been to those. those are the kinds of things. You're not, you know, you're not going to fly somewhere and stay in a hotel and get those experiences. So. Yeah, you're speaking my language there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Love it. So what, uh, do you use like an app or a membership to find these boondocking spots? So I have found, the best thing I have found, I know there's a lot of apps out there, so I'm not, but, but I haven't tried many, but there is a website called freecampsites.net, and it gives everything from a Walmart parking lot, like you can hone in on a certain area, and it might be a tent spot, it might be a van spot, it might be big enough for us, but it breaks, and it's just people like you and I that have stayed there that go in and comment and post it. But if you read through the comments, it'll say, we stayed in a 45-foot toy hauler. Okay, well, then we're going to be able to get there. Or, you know, we weren't. We tried and we weren't able. This is, you know, suitable for up to maybe a 30-foot travel trailer or a van or whatever. And Now, what's cool about some of those is it doesn't say 123 Main Street. It has coordinates. Yeah, they're coordinates. So you're when not, they're coordinates, yeah. you know you're going to a good place. Right, you're getting out of the city. And I think we saw a video of yours that you had the coordinates, and when you Google, do the coordinates of Google, you saw your camper there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so that's, that's cool, pretty cool because nobody else knows where you are. If you want to hide, you can just go way off somewhere and... and, and just do you. Do you. <laughs> just do you and not have to worry about anybody or anything, and you just park there, which my kids are like, are you serious? Like, what if somebody comes and gets you? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, now you sound like the parent, and I feel like yeah. a 12-year-old. <laughs> but we're but, just doing it <laughs> but you just can't you can't see that stuff so yeah i've used freecampsites.net yeah definitely that's yes. one of the one of the free ones out there that's got a lot of great sites and we still love harvest host um, we go to a lot of harvest host we actually have made very really, really really great friends yeah. at harvest host we have two of them we we call friends we now. have we, call we, harvest host. We, we we have two families that we've now added to our family <laughs> That are harvest hosts, and that's how we met them, and they're just amazing people. So, yeah, one of our harvest hosts is where we're going to have one of our campouts. We have one every year in October, and it, it is a harvest host, and it's a Clydesdale farm. Um, it's the Clydesdales that take the the um, Christmas tree to the, to the White House. Really, so they're in Mechanicsville, Maryland. We've become great, such great friends with them now. Now we have a camp out with them in October. They have so, an annual event. They've invited us to do a camp out. So this week. is where we just did a video on this came out this week matter of fact um it's boondocking only so if you're afraid to boondock this is the perfect time to boondock because we'll have 50 campers or so out there and if you have questions or concerns or you need to know something this is the best time to do it you can come out there and boondock with us and if you don't know how to use your water you want to fill your water up you don't know how to turn your generator on any of that kind of stuff we have people there that can help you so if you're afraid to boondock if you Here have the is. ability, but you've never done it because you're not sure what you're doing. And you'll get to see the Clydesdales. Come along. Which and the are Clydesdales huge. are amazing. And they have a massive party out there with us, so we have probably three and 400 people all together in this, in this big old camp out. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's our way to get somebody out and show them the life that we really go beside the campgrounds. So you can come out and, and try it out for size and see if you really like it. It's only for a weekend. So you go out for Friday night. You could take your shower at home before you come. Saturday is the only day you, you might not have to water. take a shower, and Sunday you go home. So you don't even have to take a shower all weekend okay. if you want to. So if you don't, can't carry water for whatever reason, you're still you're still good to go. So it's a great way to try it out for the first time. This so. year we had a, a small group because we weren't really sure, and everybody, the night after the barn party, everybody came to me and said, that was amazing. Are we invited back next year? And if so, when is it? Because we don't want to miss it. This has been phenomenal and then the the family that it's their harvest host they were like can y'all come back next year this was great so it was 
you know, you never know when you're bringing two groups together how it's all going to work out. But it was a great time for everybody. And so that that is in October. October. So if yeah, you in Maryland. want to come on down, we'd love for you guys to come on down. Come on down to Maryland it's if you're in time. October. You will love it. It's just a great. Well, great we time. will put that on the possibility uh, <laughs> list. But yeah, we love Harvest hosts yeah. uh, because they're such unique locations yes. Yes. and. After the membership fee, it's basically just a purchase yes. at your option yeah. when you're on but site. And, and, that, and that's yeah. where we go with that because everybody says you have to buy something that's not for free. We use that as an opportunity to buy Christmas gifts or birthday gifts. So yes. if you're way out somewhere. People buy for yeah. anyway, right? So you're going to buy your sister a birthday gift anyway. What would be cooler than something from the alpaca farm or the winery in California or, you know, like wherever. And then at Christmas, all our gifts didn't come from the big box stores this one my daughter i got her my daughter's a, a culinary person she works in the kitchen she went to school for that and i got her a bottle of garlic infused oil from one of the wineries we were at she called the other day she's like mom where'd you get this oil that you gave me for christmas i said um what's it say on the bottle <laughs> you told me the i don't know she's like well do they sell it online I, mm, I don't know like is there not a label yeah yeah it says right here so you can look them up online like i i don't know and I'm not there now, so... So if you, use it, that, really if you use it that it. way, it is a free membership. You pay your one year, $79, $99, whatever it is, and it's done, and you use that for those reasons. Or you go to places like we went to a meat... It was a um, beef farm. A beef farm. So you, you buy your beef. you got to have beef anyway. So we got hamburgers and, and, Some people and don't steak. Eat okay. But if you eat meat, <laughs> you have your hamburgers, your steaks, and all that kind of stuff. So you have food that you're going to buy anyway. A lot right. of produce. There's a lot of produce stands and stuff like we stayed at one in Ohio. They had fresh produce, so it was like, yeah, that's not really an expense because we would buy groceries anyway. But I'd be buying it from the market instead of from you know this this harvest host. So harvest host is, it is great. What you make it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of a video I have yet to edit from a harvest host, but it was a beekeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, he that was, would be cool. He, he was a vet, and he picked up beekeeping because it helps him with PTSD. And so now he's got okay. a whole business around it, producing oh, honey yeah. and uh, honey products. And it was a harvest host. Yeah. That would be cool. So it's like, I'm excited to edit that video because just another just really interesting yep. thing. Yep. And of course, bees are important. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know? yes they are. Yeah. So beekeeping <laughs> is a whole, like, yeah. that's very intriguing. And like, that's um, some of the stuff that you cannot find in a camper. No. Right. Exactly. So I probably don't have to ask, but <laughs> what kind of camping do you prefer? Boondocking or uh, campgrounds with full hookups? Well, that, that, that is funny you ask that because we would rather boondock. But when it's time to take that nice long shower with that hot water in demand. <laughs> you I want, want a campground then. <laughs> yes. I want the water. That's plenty of water. So, you know, there, there's plus and minuses on both sides of it. You can go out for us. We can go out for two, three, four days and be fine without any issues or problems but you do kind of want to come back and better run all three acs if it's hot outside um, you want to take that long shower um, so you know one of our favorite places kind of where we met you down in the keys that was at a campground um but wouldn't it be awesome if you could just boondock down there <laughs> oh saying, yeah just back up to the water somewhere and drop the deck and yeah absolutely yeah so boondocking is probably our our, our favorite favorite thing but and, you know, I think each has their place, yes. you know, like, and, and like, so we're from the East coast and there's not as many boondocking locations on the East coast. There's just not. Um, so you can't meet the people boondocking, boondocking as you can. Well, you do. You so win. here's a, a funny little side note, Virginia, we're from Virginia. We were in Oatman, Arizona, which is the town where the donkeys just roam free. Okay. In the town. It's a neat look. If you haven't been, you gotta go. It's pretty cool. Um, and so the whole town is like this old western wooden sidewalks kind of town. And the donkeys just, they're everywhere. You can pet them, feed them, whatever. They just, but they're wild. Um, and I ran into somebody and the lady asked me where I was from. She's a store owner. She's from Virginia, about an hour and a half from where we live. Her husband was from the town we're from in Oatman, Arizona. So you do meet the people, not out at the boondocking location, but you go into town and you're checking out Yeah, because when you were in there, I didn't meet people. anybody out there when we were boondocking. No, was, we went to, I, I, I went I to count, town with a friend and he stayed out at the camper. He didn't meet us all. I think I counted three cars <laughs> that went by. Okay. So, but we were meeting people in the town. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just different. 
But campgrounds typically mean we're closer to home and family and that kind of thing. But then boondocking means all the sites and the... So it's kind of a... It's a mix. But How long can you guys stay out? I... Th- we could do five days. We might could do water. longer, but the princess likes nice long showers. With the solar <laughs> and the generator, we could stay out a lot yeah. longer. It's just, if there's a day that I just feel like I need to take a long shower, you know, that, that cuts because we had a hundred over, little over 100 gallons on board. That cuts it down pretty quick. So Okay, so your tanks, you said about 100 gallons, 100 gallons fresh. fresh. Okay, black, gray tanks. They're 30, 40s, and 40, 40. Uh, 30 and 40s. We have four of them. We have two blacks, two grays. Okay. So you could cheat if you needed to. You can use some of the gray and put it in, in the back, other grays. In the and, back black because you don't and, use it. And you right. Know, you play the games. Um, but we usually run out of, we usually run out of fresh quicker because I want to take that shower. Okay. I think when we stay in Tampa, usually we're here about a week. week yeah. And we, you know, we make do just fine. But I'm ready to get to a full hookup after that, so I can take Well, that and this year time. we're in a full hookup. Typically we're out in the rally parking, so there's electric, but no water or sewer. Um, and we make it a week, and yeah. it's okay. So what's been your biggest challenge on the road? Where to go next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's different. You weren't expecting that, were you? No. Because we're, we have the freedom. We can go anywhere we want to go. So it's like, do we want to stay east coast a little bit this year? Do we want to go back out west? Do we? Where do you want to go? We'll see, and that's the other thing. So home is Virginia, and we have three kids. They're grown, but they're home. And last year, we had our first grandbaby. And this year, well, it was so it yeah. was he was a year old in August. I forget we're in a new year now. But then we have another one due in April. So then that's a challenge because you want to be there for the things, right? And and for the birthdays and the and, and the baby being born. And eight, like. And a baby being born is not on a certain be, day. So right, so it's not like around. a birthday party that you can plan it, right? Like, right. He's supposed uh-huh. to be here this day, and maybe he is, maybe he isn't. And so you want to try to be home for that window. So then that, you know, for me that's hard. We FaceTime every day with the grandbaby, so we do see him every day. Um but still, like you want to be there for the birthdays and the and the first this and go to the zoo, you know the things. So that's probably the hardest thing for me. I'm all about let's go because I do love it. Um, but some days I do want to be home with the kids. So so they do go on trips with you yeah, guys. They will okay. come. They will meet us. Um, so this year for this past year for Thanksgiving, our daughter came down and stayed with us, and then we were home for Christmas, so we got to see everybody at Christmas. Next, we usually have one or two of them like for Thanksgiving every year. That's a plan. And then depending on where we land outside of that, you know, we'll meet up with them or they'll come spend the weekend with us or whatever. So make the best of it when we're home or in the home area. And um, I think two of them are coming to the meetup at the Cloudsdale Farm this fall. So that'll be fun. And we'll be home in April for the baby. So. Very cool. It's similar with my adult children. Uh, you know, if I'm going to be or we are going to be somewhere cool, you know, they'll fly, so fly out right. see the cool stuff. Uh, or drive. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually expecting my first grandchild Yay! here on May 4th. Congratulations. So, it's yeah. exciting times. <laughs> That'll change you a little bit. Well, we yeah. did last year, even we were out west, we were in Vegas. And we bowled with our oldest son and our daughter in a national tournament in Vegas. So we pulled the camper. We stayed at Thousand Trails, so we didn't have to pay to stay. They flew in. They stayed for a week. We bowled. We did all the things. We did Vegas. We did all the Vegas things. Mm -hmm. And then they flew home. And then we went on our way. So it was a nice week with two of the three of them, you know. And then they went back home and we kept kept traveling. Right. And I know some people feel like, well... If I'm out on the road, I'll be lonely, but, you know, you can, like, it's new friends. You mentioned all the new friends, but yes. if you've got family scattered around. It's also a great opportunity. We have friends that, um, they live in North Carolina, well, home base is North Carolina. They live in their Montana, so they travel around. But uh, their son and her parents live in North Carolina. His parents are in Pennsylvania, and... Two of their grown kids live in California. So their RV, they truck along and they hit California. Then they truck along and they hit Pennsylvania. And, you know, they kind of circle back to the places, but it gives them the opportunity to visit with the family that's all around, which that's also a cool thing. 
Because maybe you wouldn't get to see your aunt in California if you had to pay for a flight and, and all the things. But So what's pretty cool about anyway. that whole situation was we, we, we talked to each other so we know where they are. And, of course, they're from the East Coast, we're from the East Coast, and they're part over there. We were driving out west, and we found out they were coming east. And we asked where they were going to stop, and they said we were going to stop in... It was in Oklahoma somewhere. Somewhere in Oklahoma. Like so right the Texas because we're RV in... We can change our plans, so we booked that same campsite. And we're we both Passport America members. They're like, we're going to stay at this part. I said, okay, we'll meet you there. So we watched the Super Bowl we had Sunday a Super Bowl last party year. with them, and we hadn't seen them. So we had seen them May the year before. So then we did Super Bowl party. That's what February Super January, Bowl January February. January, February. So we met them, and then they continued east, and we continued west. That's what's cool and, about the RV life right there. And yeah. it was just, you know, one of those things. It wasn't a planned trip. It wasn't this we'd been planning for, you know, ages. It was like, hey, where are y'all? Where are you? Cool. Let's stop here. Okay. And we have we done that as yeah. well. It's so much it's fun, a, though, yes. right? And they're people we met on the road. We, we didn't know them before we started the RV life. And now they're really good friends. So it's cool. So how do you afford your travels? Like, uh, what kind of work do you do now? Or, like, is it investments? You know, what, what what's supporting your travel? So we have a lawn... We started out as a lawn care business where we did everything. The lawn mowing, the fertilizing, pruning, and all that kind of stuff. Everything. Once COVID hit, everything kind of shut down and keeping employees a little bit difficult. So we switched it into lawn fertilization. So we own a lawn fertilization business now that we've owned for 20 plus years. Yeah. Um, so our oldest son now is getting ready to take that over. So we're retiring from that side of it. But I still work for that. Like, so our software, like our billing, scheduling, that software is all cloud-based. So I can do that from wherever. Um, QuickBooks, I can do from wherever. And I can remote in to the printers at home and print what needs to print. In the office, it just prints and happens. And then my mom works for us. Our son has taken over the business. We have another friend that works for us. We have one other technician. So we're able to still do our piece remotely. So as long as we have internet, which every once in a great while, that means a trip into town somewhere to use the internet. But we've been very fortunate. <laughs> um, most of the times we have AT&T and our service has been great. Um, but we're able to do it remotely. So he's my son is still boots on the ground. And he oversees the employees there, but our piece of it we can still do yeah. from wherever, which is great. No issues like managing employees from so far away, or he takes care of all that. Thank goodness. Yeah, that's because employees right now are it, you know as restaurants and all that, and it goes very very hard. We go through a lot of employees, so I stay on the Indeed sites and get everything going and and having the calls come in and and hiring. And, you know, he does all the hiring and. They do the hot firing because they get rid of themselves. But um, yeah, it, it's 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 kind of difficult sometimes being on the road. He get calls, gets frustrated. Such and such and such, such didn't show up today, um, and we just get a new we just get a new employee in. But well, and then there's also if you're out west, that's the only other challenge is you know like the employees are supposed to be there at a quarter to seven in the morning. Well, when you're out west, that's like four a.m. Mm -hmm. And so he's calling about. I'm like. <laughs> so that's all right so but, it's 9 p.m yeah. our time I call so then at say, night like I'll be working and I'll be scheduling stuff and I'm like oh I need to ask him a question it's oh it's midnight at home so what we do yeah, is we have two clocks we have a Virginia clock up there we keep that on Virginia time so oh that's okay what time it is at home at all times and then we have our clock underneath the TV and then we keep we change that one too okay we gotcha we <laughs> so, so we're traveling we always know <laughs> at home it's this time and, and wherever we are it's this time so that because, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, is it too late to call? Are they still awake? And I can look up there, and Virginia is always on Virginia time. So it works. <laughs> so what advice would you have for people looking at this lifestyle, uh, thinking about getting into it as don't know anything about RVs yet? Take the jump fast. That's yeah. that's That was... We've been doing this for over 16 years now, and before we took the full if you're talking full-time side of it, um, we we used to ask that question to everybody that we met that were full-timers. And we said, if you can change one thing, what would you change? And they all said, we would do it sooner. So 
That so is something you, that's kind of stuck in my mind. If you're going to do it while you're young, you're going to go out and enjoy it. Even if you have kids and you can homeschool, get out there and do it. We met there. Where to, we have all the ambassadors for Keystone here right now. Most of them have kids, and they're enjoying the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people say it's not fair to the kids to do this and do that because the kids can't be kids. Well, I'm gonna tell you, we had a we had a dinner over the, there last night, and every one of the kids were all together. And these are kids that don't know each other, and within like 20 minutes, they're out there playing together. Like you wouldn't know which ones are brothers and sisters no. because they're all just playing together, and nobody's left out. Everybody's doing their thing. And so, like, I tell people, even if you can't full-time, you know, like, everybody can't have a remote job. Some people have jobs that they still have to show up for and be present at the office, whatever. Um, You know, like, doctor's offices, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, if you're a doctor, please stay there because I I need you. I mean, somebody has to, somebody still has to go to work, right? So if you can't do that, get out working as much as you can. If it's weekends, long weekends, you know, a week in the summer, two weeks here, there, work. Like, do it. Get out there. Don't. And I always don't let don't let the fear stop you. Like do it. Yeah. If you have if if a pop up is what you can afford, then get a pop up. If a we tent started is what in you a can tent. Afford, yeah, we started with a tent. We did a pop up. We did a travel trailer, no sides. Travel trailer with sides, fifth wheel to the cool. toy hauler. It wasn't overnight. We didn't just jump in, but we started. And my kids were little, and they had the best time. They still have friends that they met when they were camping when they were kids, like little kids, because you know we did what we could afford, and it wasn't great at first, but. You know, Camp, we, camping we in the campground with the kids is kind of like the old days when your mom used to tell you, get home when the street lights come on. And it's kind of the same thing in the campground right now. Camping is still so far behind times that it's a community. It's, it's a community. Really and and we, when we were camping with kids, um, people, people would call and say, your kids are doing this, your kids are doing that. Yeah, my so, kids knew better. <laughs> like, they so will call everybody and took tell care us of that you're being bad. Like, you're not going to get away with it, so just don't. And they knew, <laughs> but... You know, like they got to go out and, and ride their bikes and not be, oh, you can't go past that house no. and you can't go past that house. And, you know, they get to enjoy the outdoors and, and just being kids. Again. Our biggest advice is just go ahead and get started. If, yeah. you, if you're not RVing, start in that tent. If you don't like that tent, don't give up. Buy a pop-up. Buy something that is cheap enough that you can go pay cash for and see if you like it. And if you don't like it, you can usually sell it for the same amount of money you spent on it. Well, we so you're did not our getting pop-up. out of it. He's like, let's buy an RV. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding? I said, let's buy something cheap and try it on first, and then we'll see if everybody so likes who was, it. who was right? So there was five of us, <laughs> and the pop-up taught us that we enjoyed going out and camping and RVing, but that it was too small for five of us. It was, it was just too small. So we enjoyed doing it, but we needed something bigger. And so, you know, that's what we did. But then we knew we were going to enjoy it, so we sold the pop-up for the same or maybe even a little more no than more what we paid for it. And then we moved on to something bigger that we could all go out and, and not be, you know. Like and yes, you, you see this big trailer we have, and it's beautiful, and it looks nice. We did have what is called a FEMA trailer. It was a Cavalier 35-foot Golf, Golf Stream. Not a slide. had no train. slides in it. It didn't have any holding tanks. It was basically made for Katrina, I think it was, for the hurricanes to go down and people to live in. But it never It got never set. made it down there, and a woman had it, and she kind of gutted it out, and she kind of, I mean, it, it was trash. But it, it you know, we could even... But we paid cash for it. Yeah, we paid cash for it. <laughs> and we cleaned fixed it, all it up. up. There wasn't and even. It looked good. There was no awnings on the outside of it. It was the plainest thing you can ever have. And she came inside and made it look homey. And we ended up selling it for more than we paid for it again. But and we that, were able to get out there. Get out you know, we were, we were able like to that. get out there and do it. And the kids had a good time and we had a good time. But and... don't go buy a $1 million Class A like you see in there and go, I hate this because you never get the money back from it. <laughs> right. Buy something you can afford. Work your way up. And work your way up. And if you like, you really, really like it, like, Hey, this is what I want. Get rid of it, and then buy your fifth wheel, whatever it is. You can you can miss the steps that we did, but at least try it first and and give it a shot. And don't forget, this weekend may be a bad weekend. It may be cold, rainy, hot, snowy, something. Don't blame it on that. Try it again, and and you're gonna love it. It's just if you like people, we've met one then, person that didn't like it. No, only one. Only, only one. one. Wow. And it was funny because it's always, do you love it? Yes, what would you do differently? We'd do it sooner. We met one lady, and she's like, I hate it. (laughs) I don't know what to say to her. I was like, what? She's like, I hate it. She said, my husband loves it, but we're selling our camper because I just hate it. I hate everything about it. And I went, whoa, okay. So I don't know. Like, they had an older RV, so they had done it. It wasn't that they did it once, and she had a bad experience. She said, I just don't like it. Okay. You know, there's those people, but... I've ran into the couples where, right, it might be 
uh, one or the other doesn't like it and the other one does. So they're trying to figure out how to how do that. Do I ran into one guy at a thousand trails campground. He was there by himself, said, Yeah, wife doesn't want to uh, come out and so this is my me time. I'm gonna get out and oh, camp. We, we have we have yeah. seen those people. We you did know? meet it was a guy so. too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh We even met a yeah. lady, she came to one of our campouts and she had a, a small travel trailer and she it was her and her dog. And she said, yeah, my husband and I used to camp, and when we got to a certain age, he was like, yeah, I don't really want to do that and anymore. she said, you want to do it? You go she by yourself. She said, well, I still want to go. And he said, then go. She said, so I do. So she came for the weekend to one of our campouts. She had her little pickup and her little travel trailer, her and her golden retriever. Mm-hmm. She said, and we go. I said, well, okay then. She said, then I go home, but I go by myself, and he does whatever he does on the weekend, and I come camping. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. This is great information, guys. Uh, Just uh, another question. What has been your favorite camp spot? Hmm. Well, my favorite camp spot... Mine is somewhere cool. ...used to be the Keys. And it's it's still... I have a couple up here on my list now. I'm glad to finally get more than just the Keys on her list. It was always the Keys. But then we went out west... And I never understood until we went out west when people would say, there's so many stars. I'm like, yeah, there's there's stars. Yeah, there's, there's stars. But when you get out there and there's no light pollution, oh my God, there's The stars, stars. are so bright, it feels like it's daylight out there. And it's so, so then that was, we stayed in um, Mexican Hat, Utah at Gooseneck State Park, $10 a night where the Milky Way was like right there. And I think the views and the stars from out there kind of came up to a tight second with the keys because I just... A tight second? Well, you know, first, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) I think I bounce back and forth depending where I am, but those are my two. I like the clear water and the keys, and I like the stars and the views. In Utah, of all places, I don't know. Well, my two favorite places so far has been out in Colorado and Montana area. It's just, Montana, Montana is beautiful too. Hey, oh, it is. Oh, See, there's just, so many. Montana is a postcard everywhere you look. Yes. It's just, it's just like. I mean, on the interstate, it's picture. like, oh, it looks like a postcard on the mountain. Oh, it's like a postcard. I don't want to be in Montana in January. No. <laughs> I don't want to be there no. then. But July and no. August time frame, it Glacier National Park. We went up to beautiful. Glacier this year. That was a very, very nice area. So yeah. I like it where it's a little bit cooler. Um, we were in Glacier in July this year and there was still snow on the ground. Um, so it was beautiful was nice. though. The water, oh, it was so pretty. So pretty. So yeah, Montana. See, I, I See, have a hard time. Changing. I have a hard time making a decision. <laughs> then there's the Harvest Host with the Clydesdale and the, you know, there's all the places. I don't know. It's but we have a me. lot more to find. Yeah, we feel the same way. It's when somebody asks us that question, it, it's really hard. I have to say, Utah has like become our favorite state after all of that. Uh, it's like picking your favorite kid. You know, it's, it's <laughs> right. Hard to do, you know? This kid, this kid, this, this kid, one's yeah. good, but tomorrow that one's good. Uh, we used to be like all about oh the red rocks of Sedona. No place could be like Sedona, right. but then it's like go to Utah, and it's no like, place oh, could be like, like Utah. Utah, right? right. Uh, and and so that's been a lot of fun. And and Mexican hat that sounds familiar. Is that near Escalante at all, or it's not too far from the Four Corners? Oh, okay. So uh, I'm trying to. Yeah, try that out one time. It's nice. Okay. Yeah, we we definitely have to go back. I mean, Utah's like a state. You can just spend the entire year there. Yeah. Just, you know. Well, and it was a state park, and I said, okay, it's at home state parks at least have, like, water and electric and site numbers. And she's like, yeah, no. Um, I paid her, and she's like, just turn and park wherever you want. So and, wherever? And, yeah, like just park wherever you want. And literally, like you're looking down because there's a river that looks like a gooseneck that goes like this, that you're up on top looking down into the river. Uh, it's just amazing. And there's no light. There's no lights at all out there at night. It's just dark. The lady the lady that checks you in, her little box where she, when she's there working is solar power there's 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 no lights out there so it's amazing wow that sounds incredible yeah definitely like my kind of place yes it's incredible now what is one thing that you've never shared on a youtube video that you can share with our viewers 
So you know we have the independent suspension now by Moride, and it gives you that awesome, smooth ride. Yes. But one thing we did not realize was tire wear. This has 36,000 miles on it, and the tire wear is still, I still got a lot, of, lot to go. And on a triple axle, usually the back tires wear out really, really fast. Right. What we're figuring on is they align every one of the axles. So every one, just like your car, every one of the axles are true straight. And when we had our last fusion, our back axle was cocked a little bit and we kept wearing out tires and wearing out tires and they replaced the axle and they said, it's in specs. But within spec might not be exactly perfect, right? So I have not even rotated these tires at all and they still have great traction. More I com computer aligns, you know, everything when they put the independent suspension on. So they came okay. over last night and they looked at it and they were really surprised and shocked of how the tires, how well the tires were. Well, because you wearing. don't think of that as a selling point, right? You think of, you know, the smoother ride, the things don't bounce, it helps and all of that. And that part, the tires. And you know how much tires cost now? Yeah, You're they're talking expensive. $260 a they're tire. They're expensive. Right now. Right. And so that's like a, a bonus, right? You, you you got the smooth ride and everything, but tire wear, that's every 12, and it's a huge miles, bonus. Every 12,000 miles, I was putting new tires on one set of the axles because they were wearing out a little bit faster. Wow. And now at 36,000, I haven't changed any tire. Knock on wood. Yeah, right. We're still good, but it's, get, it's, getting, it's, getting ready, it's getting ready for tire change now. But that is something that you're saving. You spend the money on, the, on them, but you're also recovering money from not having to change on time. And that's so. interesting. It's something that Moride was not they didn't pushing even, They didn't even at think all. about it. Like, they didn't even think about it until we talked about it last night. So They all came over here and looked at it and went, yeah. wow, They're like, that's oh, unbelievable. New okay. selling point. Well, that is a yeah. great tip. Uh, thanks for sharing that, yes. guys. Yeah. I think that's going to help some people say, okay, that's going to push me over to, yes. to make right. that investment. Because right. it is an investment, but we have found it to be very worth it. Definitely. So what do you tow your RV with, Jimmy? We tow it with this 2021 Chevy Silverado 3500 Dually. Okay. Duramax diesel. There's yeah. The diesel. Occasionally I miss my Duramax. It says all the pulling power to pull 21, my 21,000 pound toy hauler through the mountains of Colorado with no issues and problems. Okay. Uh, coming down off the hills with the engine brake slows us down without having to use much braking at all. Okay. So it's nice. Uh, what kind of uh, upgrades have you done to it? So all the upgrades I've done on it so far basically is to change the tires out where our tires worn out put so many miles on it. Uh, we have added a 60 gallon Titan fuel tank on it to get us farther out at, out west from gas or fuel station to fuel station. Because without the 30, 60 gallon tanks, we're not going to make it. We're just not going to make it. Right. There are some stretches that are pretty crazy yes. uh, without fuel stations. So. And, and, and if you don't the last station is really, really expensive because they know it's 200 miles to the next one. So, <laughs> so they, the prices go up a little bit. So we added a 60 gallon to get us from point A to point B a little bit better. Okay, so about how far can you go now? I can go, I, I try to stretch about 350 miles, 400 miles. I can go farther, but I don't want to go much farther than that just to be safe. <laughs> Oh, we do have one more upgrade. Something you don't have on a Ford. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know you don't have it because you locked your keys and you locked your keys oh, in the keys. Yeah. <laughs> you upgraded to a to a, oh, to a, uh, nice. a keypad. So maybe you should look into one of those. Probably should <laughs> after that. <laughs> I'm always afraid I'm gonna lock the keys. These have the automatic running boards. Oh, okay. Cool. come down without worrying about the clearance so they come down further so it's easier to get in okay you have to step up so far yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah and you can do some of this on it's not cold we have the halo backup camera not okay sure so how many backup cameras do you have on the rv then Backup camera, I just have one on the backup. Okay. On the, on the there, yes. I have one on the on the outside, and I have one on the inside that so I can see the toy hauler side of it. So oh, I saw that in there. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, nice looking truck. Thank you. To go with a nice looking rig. Thanks. And then we have the, in the back, we, of course, 
There's your gas. There's your fuel. Don't say gas, but there's your fuel. <laughs> Diesel. Right. Diesel. And then we coat with the um, 25K companion BMW hitch. Oh, okay, sure. Same hitch that we have. This is the um, the plug for your DC to DC charge and for your solar. Okay. So that's where it plugs in. Yeah, we've talked about that upgrade with e trailer, but just yep. haven't, you know, haven't done it yet. But uh, how do you like the BMW Companion? I love it. We'll There's like not it. no yes. chucking, no moving. It's it does great. Yeah. It's real easy to hook up and unhook, level or unlevel. It's it's pretty sweet. Well, yeah. and since everybody's gone to the puck system, like yeah, even puck system putting it in awesome. and out makes makes it so much easier. Right. Yeah, I don't know that I would switch that hitch out for anything. I just don't think I would try it. Yeah. I know a lot of people are like all about gooseneck. Yeah, I'm not doing now, gooseneck. Now, so it's I'm like I'm not a gooseneck fan. Okay. And the reason being that this is my I have worked with tractor trailers for many, many years. There's a reason why tractor trailers have kingpins and fifth wheels. They don't have goosenecks. Okay. So that's that's my stand on it. If if they thought they would work better not they would. waver in that. If they thought they did better they'd have goosenecks on on tractor trailers so right. okay that's my stance on it whether or not it's right or wrong who knows but that's how <laughs> i feel about it okay what do you call it like soft close and open for a truck <laughs> yes automatic it's so really. easy you just push the button and it goes oh my gosh that is cool you can still do it manually but and so then if something if it meets any resistance it just opens so the good thing the is when i'm backing up to the camper if i forgot to lower this hit a button inside it just drops yeah, That's there nice. you go. Jimmy and Lisa, find us camping. What an amazing tour. Uh, inspiration for RV newbies out there that are looking for uh, advice on how to get started. Yep. And right. you guys are just, I mean, this is such a great video. Um, and uh, it's, it's great talking to you guys, seeing your new rig. Yes. Pretty much brand spanking new. Yep and all of the upgrades that you've done and what we'll do is link to your social media your youtube channel and some of your favorite videos okay. and uh yeah just thank you so much yes, guys i appreciate you. it Thanks. and we uh, enjoyed it yeah and gosh we have a lot of great tours like this one so if you want to see the next one all you got to do is click right over here and you can check it out